Hi, everyone. Em is feeling a little sleepy, I'm guessing. Yeah, more than usual because I'm always sleepy, but I, I'm just, I'm so sleepy today. And I, I, I made a, a, an adult mistake. It feels like I made like a teenager mistake of like, oh, I, I drank too much. No, I just sat outside in my own yard and trick or treated too much. And, um, so you did like a really little kid mistake, like not a teenager mistake. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. It's it's like, like I just missed nap time. Too excited. Yeah. Yeah. It was our, um. It was our first, uh, by the way, when we're recording this, it's the night after trick or treat. It's Halloween. It's November 1st. Sorry. November 1st. Uh, No, I, we were outside from like six o'clock to like 10 o'clock or something. I will tell you the, when, when we last recorded, I was saying I was nervous. I didn't have enough candy. Mm -hmm. How'd it go? Um, I, I guesstimated the exact right amount, which was 15 pounds of candy. Okay, how many uh, pieces is that? Um, well, see, I'm not a wet blanket, and I no, am no, team. I'm not Every saying... kid should get a handful, not a piece. I'm not saying that so, uh, that you are. I'm just saying how many pieces is 15 pounds of candy? I have no concept of how many pounds. I just know right. by the I'm, bag size. I'm saying, as someone who's not a wet blanket, uh, as someone who's going off of the handful, not the one piece rule, then it was about. Uh, it seemed like about 150 kids. No, no, I know. Sorry. That's what I'm saying. I know. I also give handfuls, but I'm saying how many pieces are 15 pounds? Like how many did you buy? Because I'm curious, like, because my concept of buying candy Um, is only is not by pounds. I don't really understand the pounds, but maybe that's a better way to look at it. I only I mean, I just looked at the bag and it's each one was like, I think, two pounds, but it was like the big fat (gasps) party pack ones. I'm curious. Anyway, so. I, it was probably like I mean it was it was at least eight party size bags of candy. Mm. It'll say like pounds on. Like I never on the thought bottom. to look at that, and I think that's probably a smarter way to do it than pieces because like mm. if you're doing multiple pieces, it doesn't yeah it doesn't like anyway. But we did have some kids come and like try to empty the whole bowl, and I'm like, okay, I say you can have a few, but like there was mean, take two kids that i can't get out of i can't shake them because the way that they really lunged for it when they were given permission i was like oh my god it's like you've never eaten before um yeah yeah but they're <laughs> but then i was also i think that kid so i was trying to have a little grace i was like okay karma like they're stealing my candy and i took a lot of people's candy when i was a kid yeah um, um also spoiler alert for being like a homeowner now you're gonna like see those kids again and you're gonna be like oh god here they come yeah um and you're gonna recognize it. certain kids it's so fun though um that you do trick-or-treating now how so 150 kids you said about that's a yeah, good amount that, yeah but i was kind of shocked because i i looked online i'm in like a bunch of burbank community mm-hmm. things um and all of them were saying like we get like four or five hundred kids minimum and what i didn't realize they were talking about was like a few streets away from me oh yeah the street makes a huge difference which like it's so wild that when you just walk a block all of a sudden like the energy totally changes and now there's like traffic we on had the our neighbors and... come and stand in front of our house to give out candy because they're like nobody's on my street like yeah just one catty corner over that's what happened with me and allison where like we were between like two non-participating right. houses and so we were like but that also means like on a dead street with non-participating houses on either Everyone's side of us, we still got 150 you. kids. Yeah, so yeah. um That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, I, I was hoping for the experience of like it like it just being an overwhelming amount of children that I could just give candy to, but as creepy as that sounds. But uh No, I it's one time a year, was it's not perfect. creepy. <laughs> Yeah, at the risk of sounding like a creep, where the fuck are all the children? We um, already established the date, thankfully, so everybody has to give us a pass. <laughs> no, I, I, but it was it was weird because we got to like the last, the last part of the bowl where I was like, mm-hmm. oh god, like based on how things have been going, I know, we definitely so don't have scary. enough. We thought about like, do we run out and get more candy? And it ends up being the perfect amount. And we like met some of our neighbors which was nice we met a, a fan so, um, so did now, I. Hey. <laughs> now that you know my address we have a secret please don't tell anyone um, hi bailey <laughs> um bailey said honey mommy listens to that lady's podcast and i went oh howdy <laughs> oh i i heard m yeah and i went uh-huh. <laughs> i love that there was not even a question in mine it was like 
see that lady over there? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, it was very hi, Carolyn. <laughs> hi guys. Um, and then uh, we had friends uh, that used to be our neighbors at the old place come and visit us at this place to say hi. And they got candy, which was nice. Nice. And then guess who fucking ended up being one of my trick or treaters was my friends from ISS that I haven't seen in like eight years. What? They like literally grab candy LA at my bowl, and I was like, "It's a small world." Sometimes it's so weird. Yeah, it's so huge, but it's like sometimes you're like, "Wait, what?" Well, also like, so they have they had little little kids the last time I saw them, and now their their kids are like mm. teenagers, and one of their kids grabbed candy out of the bucket. And I was like, "I swear to God, that looks like a five year old I once knew." <laughs> that looks like a five year old I once knew. Wow. But yeah, and then they ended up. So now they they uh they said like, "Oh, we we get food." uh we you know near here once a week we'll call you so now we, we might be rekindling okay i love nice. that a little How, friendship anyway it was very fun afterwards we allison and i ordered a pizza and then we held the pizza box and walked around uh and <gasps> ate pizza on the street while we looked at all the lights which was very nice so that might That's be our new tradition so romantic what about you How was your trick-or-treating how was our grumpy toad oh my gosh Oh my gosh. She was so grumpy, but the problem is <laughs> I'm grumpy today. So I, I guess today I'm the grumpy. You thug. get it. No, she had a, a high fever. And so we were like, Oh no, she's always sick on Halloween. But like, this is the first year she's like really About excited. Yeah, yeah. And like gets it and like has a better concept of time, you know? And so she like was so tired. She was nodding off in the middle of the day and we're like, please take mm. a nap. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't. We said, what's wrong? And she goes, I don't want to sleep through Halloween. And we I were don't like, blame her. It's got it's like got the biggest event of her life at four I agree. years old. Up until now. And so I was like, oh honey, we're not gonna let you sleep through Halloween. Like we'll we'll wake you up no matter what. Literally three seconds later, Blade said she was just unconscious. So oh, she, we we got a kind big of girl. I know, we got a big nap in her. I got some Tylenol in her, and she had the best mother effing time. She walked to all the neighbors and then she would come back sit on our porch while other kids like walked by and trick-or-treated and just eat like whatever pieces she want then she would like empty them into a bowl on our porch and walk back out and say okay daddy let's go and then they would go on <laughs> chop, like another chop, please yeah, chop chop and then Jeeves. Uh, <laughs> Jeeves. and then she'd say ciao ciao and go off to like the next wing of the neighborhood and go that way she came back with so many full like full size because all like a lot of the families know her i guess and they're like oh i put aside a special one for you and i'm like damn girl you're three and you have more friends social than I butterfly do. yeah anyway it was great we had i would guess probably this year like 11 no like 900 some kids it was that's crazy, crazy. That's it wild. was crazy we ended up like we thought we way overbought candy because i how bought pounds, a bunch if you had to guess i know I'm, well, i don't know and i'm like that's you, why how did it fit a row in your car like how like size wise what did it look like yeah well the problem was we bought them on all different days from different places that's why mm. blaze and i like both ended up buying a ton and didn't realize the other one did and then i had some coming from amazon and i was like oh they're not gonna make it in time so we went out and bought a bunch more <laughs> anyway yeah. I, so it kind of came from all over but it it was like 1600 pieces or something like that wow. um which that's why i was asking you about the pieces because i was like i don't know mm -hmm. i should go look at the pounds anyway um but it was great there were so many kids i think a lot of kids in like the smaller kentucky neighborhoods drive up to our part of the you know town for for trick-or-treating so it was like it was really nice um nice yeah was there was fun. i looked on the my community pages and everything after the fact somebody uh was actually counting how much candy they actually brought yeah. not not in pieces not in pieces unfortunately but oh damn um, it my only frame of reference for some reason <laughs> i'm like but, okay, the so only one on earth who like does it by pieces ours was like uh eight to nine party like big big yeah okay fucking okay. bags and that was 15 pounds um gotcha. they uh they ended up having to do like because they were on the the main street that was really crazy. Yeah. And they bought 50 pounds of bags. So like three three times what I had. So that's like 30 wow. 30 party size bags and they were like we still ran out of candy. It was That's like, crazy. Yeah. Um so I'm 
as much as I wanted to be part of that scene and I thought that's, I thought this like whole street was going to turn into like Halloween town and it was actually the street like next door. Um, I'm actually really <laughs> grateful because I'd be so fucking annoyed eventually. I'd be like, I can't get a word in with my fucking friends. Cause I have to keep handing out this candy. Oh yeah. Like I feel like when you're on kind of the thoroughfare, like we were, it's like, you don't even have a second to like think before there's another family no, like we staring had, at you. We had weirdly the perfect, not only the perfect amount of candy, but the perfect amount of like space in between for like, Oh, I like, see. cause Allison and I, we could have done the classic, like letting the kids knock on the door, but without triangulating myself, it's easier for the kids yeah. to access us if we go I up think to the front. most people are outside nowadays, unless it's like really bad weather. I mean, we were outside okay. with just umbrellas. I feel like everyone on our street was like playing music and everyone was out at the front. Yeah, of we had houses. music going and yeah. stuff like that. Also with um, dogs, like I think people are like, no, don't ring my doorbell. Like I'll right. just sit outside. <laughs> Actually, that's a great point too. Yeah. But yeah, so we just we just sat out by our at the front of our house, and uh, Cute. kids came up, and there was one. That's one of my kid. favorite parts. That was what I was one of the things I was most excited for becoming a grown up was handing out candy because I was just like, it's so special. I don't know. To I be part of it. I had um yeah I I was trying to bring the energy that I always wanted from a candy yeah, giver. Where exactly. I was, where I you was like, can be that person for the kids. It's I was so like, sweet. no one's, no one's looking, not even, not even mom, just grab as much as you want. Like, yeah. and then they would say like, Jacob, take one. And I'd go, Jacob, take Jacob, three. Take, uh, we yeah. did that so many times. We're like, don't listen to your mother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and then people would walk by like a second time on the way to their car and they'd be like, we already stopped here. And I'm like, you can have more candy. Yeah, I, and then sometimes the parents, like there were a couple pregnant moms and I was like we my mom was like please take some candy and oh, they were like I, we gave, oh we, no i'm you know i'm an adult and we were like to eat it we gave so <laughs> many adults candy it's shocking if you, <laughs> if i wonder if even not on an actual halloween night on a, any given night the way that joy showed up in people's I eyes know. if i just shoved the bowl in their face and i was like do you want a piece of candy and they'd be like i don't have any kids and i'm like i didn't I know, ask if you have any fucking yeah, that's kids not what do I you asked, want you candy? weirdo <laughs> i'm like halloween's for everyone bitch like who it told is. you that's not true um Aww. And uh, I will say it was nice. The first and the last trick or treater were door knockers, so it did feel classic. But oh, you so you got that experience, nice. Yeah. Um. I I I wanted to tell you there was someone, my two favorite people that came by. Um, one of them reminded me of Leona, a little Aww. kid in costume, because she had such a little fucking attitude. Oh, she God. <laughs> <laughs> she walked by and she went, I don't want any candy, and then she skipped away, and then she stopped and turned around yep. and went just kidding and then she came right back and i love it that's robbed us um oh, and, th and then there was gorgeous i love one that. person who um this kid <laughs> just kidding <laughs> just kidding and then she like took all of it um there was one kid dressed as this little like it was a handmade outfit and it was Aww. a robot costume and they couldn't even see through their own costume <laughs> like and they were like around. they were like can you put the candy in i can't see and i was oh. like for that you get half of this bowl Here for sure go. um the like but, least effective robot in history can't even pick up candy <laughs> well so then when i put candy in, all of a sudden his like his it was like a cardboard robot thing he clearly had like an led light or something no. in there. and as soon as i put candy in the light turned on in his mask and he went scanning robot <laughs> scanning and then he went candy complete and then he just ran away <laughs> Okay, hold on. Every year, I'm like, making that's this a tradition. Kid. Eva, write this down. Every year, we're going to do like our favorite trick-or-treaters of the night oh, before. I think I would, that's really I, fun. I, I mean, that was like, that's a absolutely Just a kidding. character. Just yeah, kidding. I want to hear more about candy scanning and all yeah. the homemade costumes. <laughs> Who yeah, was your take, favorite? Oh my gosh, now I'm trying to think. Um, so I was just always so surprised by how sweet some of the kids were like they would yes. just turn around and go thank you ma'am and i was like oh they you're clearly five. i was telling allison i was like they clearly got such a lecture like before they left the house of their mom being like do not fucking disappoint me do not do not us. <laughs> this because, is a big moment <laughs> because every single kid who would only grab one piece tattled on themselves and they were like i think i accidentally got two and i'm like i'm not your mom kid I take know. five what's I wrong with you i accidentally got two that happened a lot yeah I, I feel like it was all a blur i can't even remember what my favorite costume was there were some where they were clearly homemade and i was like i have no idea what you are but it is cracking me up because yeah, but the, the effort is it. there yes yeah. i'm like i you're really owning it whatever you are yeah I, there was nothing is... like super like creative though like i don't think no costume wise what was I the don't... most common one 
Oh my gosh. We didn't even have a lot of like princess, like Elsa's. We had some. I was going to say ours was Elsa's. We, your, really? Leona yeah, was onto something with Grumpy Toad. She knew. She knew that she had to be the odd one out. But there were a lot of like Minecraft and like mm. things that I don't really understand where I'm like, okay, I know sort of that that's a thing young people like. There was a SpongeBob I was excited about. A little girl, SpongeBob. A SpongeBob was cute. Yeah. I saw, okay, we saw three Pikachus and for one who, one who was like a little baby and he was like trying to figure out the concept of grabbing a piece of candy. <laughs> um, we, his parents were like, I'm sorry. And we were like, no, we we're big Pokemon fans. The dad whipped out Pokemon cards and just gave no. them to us. Wait, <laughs> so what? Like, oh, hell yeah. I was yeah. like, I know who picked this kid's so costume. So you got a trick or treat. So it, it literally, and they were trick or treat themed Pokemon cards. Wait, that's really cute. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Um, who knew? Oh, I was going to tell you the, this is like a, uh, one that's trending on TikTok right now, but I saw one in real life and it blew my mind was that someone dressed as, um, Doug Dibidome, home of the Dimsdale Dibidome from <gasps> Fairly Odd Parents. That's. And- very good and the hat like it was uh, it's went so high that they couldn't walk through the trees like it just kept knocking (laughs) off (laughs) but everyone they walked past would go doug nebidome and he'd go no oh it must feel so good when people like actually recognize you and you're like hell yeah well leona thought everyone recognized her because i made her a name tag that said grumpy toad from pete the cat and then i bought a sticker book and put stickers of the characters (laughs) so people would be like oh i recognize that so people would be like hi grumpy toad and she's like i am grumpy toad no that's you probably i don't think you realize how much better you made her halloween oh she's gonna remember because as a child with a very thick german accent when i would try to tell people like i'm the elf from the hans christian (laughs) anderson series and everyone else is like i'm a cantaloupe i'm a paper bag (laughs) yeah (laughs) something fucking weird yeah something fucking weird um and people wouldn't get it and then i would just like get made fun of and i'd feel so embarrassed so i was like that is not happening i am putting her costume on her name tag but i think you know what it's i think what you know you did is that you didn't give her a bad experience but i don't think you've realized the joy of the good experience because oh that's nice i had not thought about it that way because she definitely will remember this as like a moment where like a hundred people recognized her that had to blow her mind and then she got a king size hershey bar Oh, man. She's She's not having a bad day. I'm telling you She's having a great time. Oh, and last thing I want to say, too, I had to post for the first time since moving here in my neighborhood forum, like they have this like e-form, and the post was called, have you seen my legs? Because I bought, so remember how I said last year my skeleton was stolen, so I bought another one this year, and it finally came on Halloween yesterday. I set them all up. I put it in, that's why we drink witch hat on him, because that was the only witch hat I had, and I put that on him. And then I made sure to tie him up to the door so that, like, people couldn't steal him, right? Yeah. Some fucking asshole teenagers, I'm assuming, I, listen, maybe not, but some assholes pulled the legs off of it and just, like, took those. Is this, like, a like a tr- like a viral thing? Like, a trend? No, because... I think people just like to take shit. Like, sometimes people will just dig the flowers out of my flower pots and just, like, walk away. Now I'm like checking all my stuff in the yard. I'm like, where's my shit? Where's my shit? <laughs> For real? I don't know what it is. It's like it's I mean, we're near a high school and I think just sometimes the kids just get like and it's it's whatever. Like I'm not going to hold a grudge about it, but I had to post the the reason I posted is cuz I have the top half of the skeleton and I'm like, well, what are they going to do? They'll probably just toss it out into the sidewalk. So I said, mm-hmm. if anyone happens to see disembodied skeleton feet, like please let me know. Um, so anyway, that's just my PSA today. I was very sad when I saw him missing this morning. Teenagers um, suck. I told you it got egged, right? My No. Uh, the car my car, thank God, not my actual house. Your is, car got egged? Yeah. But I, but even no. then But then as I say, um, thank God, not really, because like paint the no, paint like say, starts chipping off pretty yeah, quick and if it, it dries. Probably seeps into everything. Ew, M. Um Who but did that? I, I don't know. Some Not teenagers? fucking me. Teen- teenagers. Yeah. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was clearly a drive by. Like our car oh, was not targeted. But, was that last um, night? No. I, you would oh. think it was on I a was random. I was going to say, at it least was on it a was on Halloween. Random, oh. like August night when we moved in. It was, And it's a hot month. Oh, that's rude. Oh, well, I th- I'm sure they thought it was hysterical. But like, sure fun did. fact, if you do get eggs, the, uh, once the egg dries, the paint starts chipping on your car. <gasps> LOL. But if it happened on the house, then it's hard to clean. And then your house smells like rotten eggs. So yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah. which I prefer. It's but, not good either way. But because they're teenagers and they stay up at, until like four in the morning. You can't like catch them. Well, no, I was going to say because they were up until four in the morning. And then we, I was like leaving for the airport at like six in the morning. <sighs> like I caught it while 
it was running. It looked like oh, someone you happened to see. I see. Okay. It looked like someone like snot rocketed all over my car. That's it looked nasty, disgusting. Dude. And then like, thank God I saw eggshell in there and I was like, okay, it's just egg. But Ugh. it had to get we saw it while it was still able to get washed off. So Yuck. Well, I'm sorry that happened. I I don't envy you. I hope it got cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Anyway, teenagers okay. suck. Um teenager scare remember when we thought that was like our anthem and now it's like no it's how i really feel about teenagers <laughs> i remember being like out of yeah me. we're scary yeah, we're so scary <laughs> and now i'm just like no you're just annoying and that's what scares me is like you're that's... so unpredictable with how fucking you're annoying unpredictable. you are yes yeah Piss i'm just off. scared of not feeling relaxed because you're gonna do something that annoys me like yeah. pulling the legs off my skeleton is not even gonna get you a nice halloween decoration it's just now two broken pieces of a like at least make it a good prank like come on also the invincibility of teenagers freaks me out oh I'm just like, they're out of control i'm just like and i remember feeling that way too hey, so i remember like, when you told me to fucking paint a starbucks lid and put it up by my mm -hmm. skeleton and i just didn't have time i'm just saying it would have maybe if only I, I i wonder if someone would have seen that and go oh no that would can't. have been wild though if the legs were if it got stolen and that stupid frappuccino lid was on <laughs> <laughs> like well that didn't work <laughs> but we tried oh god <sighs> okay i'm so sorry anyway um this is a long intro but after halloween we we gotta catch up so um no i think uh people would like to hear our spooky spooky stuff i, I also think. would like to know what um if you guys want to write in the comments i want to know what our like listeners actually dressed up as or what their oh, family dressed up fun. as so i bet people have creative costumes in our in our audience i, I mean we know that we did the uh we did the Halloween costume uh, contest. contests, yeah, mm -hmm. and we have some great ones. It was very hard to pick, but we did end up picking some winners, I believe. Those are going to be announced at some point. Also, sorry, I was supposed to mention this. Um, I hope Eva's not having a heart attack, but uh, we need to announce a very quick thing about Patreon, which is just that um, it's an Apple iOS situation. They changed, you've probably heard this on other podcasts that you listen to, but they changed the sign-up process for Patreon um, essentially, if you sign up through the app store, you end up paying like a big surcharge. And so we're just uh, encouraging people to go onto the desktop, like the, just a web browser. Patreon.com. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the actual site, just because um, we don't want people to get overcharged. And that just kind of goes straight to Apple. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we can all agree, even if they are hard up they're they're fine. OK, so we don't yeah. need your hard earned <laughs> money going there um, if it doesn't have to. So, yeah, you can uh, go to Patreon. And on that note, we did an awesome Patreon Halloween live stream. It was super fun. Yes, and it was so fun that I think we decided maybe Maybe we want to make that a monthly thing. Yeah, I would like to. I I will. I really enjoyed that um, before it was during COVID or before COVID, but we used to do a monthly Instagram live. And then. Yes, it was um, pre-COVID because there was no way to do two distances yet. That's why yeah. we had to stop. Yeah. And so um, I that was always one of my favorite things to do because it's Same. at least once a month when people can actually interact with us yeah, and ask like we're questions. Talking to you. And, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I would like to do that. Actually, probably I like that more maybe than um, Yappy Hour. Um, but yeah, I we were like... thinking, well, because we looked at the number, we crunched the numbers, folks. Um, we crunched the numbers, and the, by that I mean I looked at them one time, and uh, <laughs> they weren't. I mean, people come to the Yappy Hour, but it's not that many, and it feels like maybe people aren't as excited about it as they were about like the live stream. So we're thinking of potentially just doing a monthly live stream instead of the Yappy Hours. But we're going to put a poll on Patreon so that people can weigh in with their options, their favorites. Well, I no, I actually I I really prefer the live stream more than the Yappy Hour because I feel like the Yappy Hour is just um like a another podcast episode, which is fine because yeah. I mean that is basically. But what it's it always is. about just something kind of you don't know what to expect. It's kind of random. Which is and, fine too, but and I I always I love a live stream. I love interacting with everybody. So I I'll always take that over anything else. So same. And now that we know, like we have the right software and stuff, I feel like it'll be uh, easier. And certainly better than it was pre COVID. So oh, and M made a good point too. Like we could do like more seasonal ones. So like a Christmas or a you know holiday live stream and a, yeah. I wanted to. I suggested um, that Christine and I open our Christmas presents oh, on a right. December yes. one. Yes, because we usually do it as like a a patreon special but it's like i kind of like sometimes the i'm giving you things that have to do with the show and then no one gets to like it feels like we're be not a part of that you know right and we're not going back to look at comments later so it's like oh now we can actually see people react and they can see us react live so yeah anyway, anyway. sorry that, that uh, sorry eva that i forgot to mention that but 
it would also give people a chance to like weigh in on like what they want to talk about during the live stream. Like if there's anything they want to oh, ask true. questions like about. Oh, true. Like ask questions so. about things. Yeah. Yeah. Like anyway. I got to talk about how I was polter groped because someone asked about the ghost in my house. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. For people who weren't on the live stream, Christine had something touch her in her house on her bubbies. Boob. Yeah. It hasn't happened since. No, last night I was like, oh my God, it's going to happen because I talked about it. Um, but no, no, it didn't happen. Um, so maybe they're giving me a little space. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Well, good luck to you and thank you, the twins. Um, <laughs> so, oh. I'm sorry. That's so gross. Um, Christine, I really need you to do me a favor. Oh, okay. Anything. Wow. I know. I was like, I just want to see what happens if I say anything. Uh, this is, this is certainly doable. I wrote this, these notes with the intention that you are going to really fucking bring it in terms of banter. Good thing I brought a vape pen. <laughs> I was going to say, not to put you on the spot, but I need you to like be a really good podcaster today. Um, <laughs> be on my A game, you say? Um, no, it's going to be on... easy. It's going to be okay, easy for you. Okay, okay, okay. I'm ready. Watch me be so bad at bantering because now I know I should banter and I'm like, wow, the pressure's no, no. on and suddenly I I promise choke. you the prompts are very clear. Excellent, Tante. Okay, well, I will also say real quick, I was on um, an episode that I know you did the same thing, GAC, uh, Gossip at the Corpse Cart with Lucy and Amanda from Wine and Crime. Um, it was you, me, and my brother all three in a row for three months. So, oh, really? Uh, <laughs> yes. So I got my my shot and we recorded yesterday and Amanda just goes, oh, don't worry, you can vape on this show. And they all both pick up their vape <laughs> pens. And I was like, wait, where's mine? And I pull mine out and they were like, oh my God, we... <laughs> so i thought wow they're so much cooler than me um, they, they feel you feel so seen yeah they feel so seen i can't believe i don't have to hide it anyway sorry so yes i am prepared to banter okay take take a big hit but I, I, I won't i won't do the thing that i want to do which is tell you information so you can choke because i want you to choke on smoke that's crazy yeah that would really be bad for audio but i would like you to to get warmed up if okay, you i'm super weird about doing it on camera so i'll well, go just down. hide away just hide yeah 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 Oh, you know, if a principal saw you, you'd be in so much trouble. Oh, my God. I just remembered my favorite trick-or-treater. This little boy walked up and said, what's your name? And I went, what's your name? And then he went, you look a lot like my principal. <gasps> oh, and I that's went, such a, a painful I thing to say. Do? I was like, excuse me? And then he like came up and he looked at me and he went, never mind. And he took a whole handful and walked away. And I was like. That was the weirdest thing. That I've ever was, seen. I mean, in the world of trick or treats, that was a fucking trick for sure. The, I know it was so rude. And the way that I tell you, this child was probably seven, like really small. And he's like, what's your name? And I was like, is that how you talk to your principal? I like, like how as a seven year old, he's like, y I know you're not someone who's going to piss me off on hey, Halloween. You. Yeah, get <laughs> I know you're here. not about to put restrictions on my good time. When a six year old just walks up and goes, what's your name? I was like, excuse me, what's your name, little child? I, I um, either want to be on your side or I want to run very far away from you. Yeah. I was like, next year I should dress as like pr a principal and see if that kid comes back. Oh, did you get that kid's name? It'd be funny if you like gave him like a, 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 hall, a detention. Well, I said, what's your something? name? And he's like, he's like, I'm not telling you and i was like well i'm not gonna tell you either his parents are cops i can already tell. I, know, I know i was gonna say he's he's like i, I don't show play me your badge game. number i'm not telling yeah, you anything without I a don't lawyer present this game uh, <laughs> uh, mommy okay. that lady asked for my name okay he asked me first yeah. God. <laughs> trust me i know i was like am i gonna get in trouble with any of these kids if i get I too wild and out yeah do <laughs> i start wild now <laughs> um Okay, where were we? Um, oh, yes, I'm about to tell you a very good thing. Well, a very silly thing. And I think okay. anyone who knows this topic has probably been eager for me to talk about it. Christine. Yep. Can you name every single subscription you have? Go. Um, okay, so I know I can't <laughs> name all of mine. <laughs> But, um, and Christine obviously can't either. It is just awful. At one point, I tried to list everything that I have a subscription for, and all I did was get scared and realize that I'm was blowing my money. The so. list never ends, and it's like the more you do it, the more scared you are. And that's why, I also, yes, yeah, so we're talking about Rocket Money, by the way, folks. But I'm in the same boat as you am, where sometimes I'm like, Rocket Money, can you do it? Can you look and tell me? I'm too scared <laughs> to look. We we even sometimes put like the um, podcast card. I have my podcast card on there, and it'll like tell us how much we're spending like during tour versus not, and on supplies. 
I just freaking love this service. With Rocket Money, we don't have to remember every subscription or worry about forgetting any because we can see them all laid out right in front of us. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps find and cancel your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so you can grow your savings. See all your subscriptions in one place and know exactly where your money is going, which I, I mean, I, I was the <laughs> That's way what we're that scared I, of. <laughs> the way that I need a list. I just want it all right there. Somebody for me. needs to do that for me, right? Not I don't want to do it myself. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash drink. That's rocketmoney.com slash drink. Rocketmoney.com slash drink. Um, this is the dildo monster. <gasps> what? Are you very excited? I'm very what? Excited. <laughs> this or the monster of dildo pond. <laughs> the dildo monster. So good. I have to tell you now. You're going to forget halfway through that a monster is coming because okay. the first half is just obviously a deep dive on the fucking dildo monster. So I'm going to forget I'm... and then the dildo monster will like suddenly surprise me. And That's then great. she'll appear. Yes. That's just excellent news. Thank you. Um, so I, I, I have some extra notes. I couldn't, I couldn't tear away from this. I have extra notes that I texted myself later. So I'm going to be going between two sets of notes. So at some point I will slip I up and go, tear myself oh, fuck. away from this one. I just couldn't, I couldn't get myself away from this big dildo monster. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I have the n- number of times I've heard you say that. Which, by the way, um, rest in peace to my algorithm. Every piece of, oh, internet, I imagine the, you're fucked. Yeah. The immediately, I mean, even like TikTok, like the, in more ways than one <laughs> they're like truly every i don't know what the right words are but after searching this my entire computer i'm surprised didn't just shut down didn't because just set on fire <laughs> when you type in dildo monster i'll tell you the cryptid is not the first thing that comes up um this is like when i do beach cheese idiot and i'm like searching for like blue lives matter blankets on amazon <laughs> to read reviews and then amazon's like we got the perfect gift for you this holiday season and i'm like what's happening <laughs> i'm telling you the the way that um uh, fantasy sex toys are oh boy just you showing your up new, on my phone uh, a holiday wish list oh my god and remember i'm the charlotte so this is every <laughs> time i turn on my phone i just go well, ah! i'm also the charlotte so maybe we're both just uh, I didn't know. Wait, so you're the Charlotte too? Well, I, in the actual bedroom, I would be a Charlotte for sure. Oh, 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 I see. I see. You're the Charlotte of like being, yeah, of sex toys. Uh huh. But between the two of us, we both know that the the gamut runs from Samantha to Charlotte. And Understood. Okay. I, I I'm see, looking I at see. a Samantha. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't see her anywhere. So okay. it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is in a town called Dildo, Newfoundland. Dildo, Newfoundland. Mm hmm. Im- inc- impeccable. Uh, there are about 1,200 dildoians. Stop it right now. And fun fact, in 1938, Amelia Earhart stopped here to refuel. Yeah, she did. (laughs) I have a feeling she (laughs) knew exactly what she she was doing. (laughs) That is really good that's really good news i'm glad she got to see that before she passed i'm i love that she had a map and she saw well i'm obviously refilling in dildo there's just where no else way I'm not. would i possibly go i'll reroute for a few miles just to get there because it's been named dildo for centuries so she definitely at least landed and went what is this place and they went welcome to dildo and she went oh welcome yeah i'm with the right people they probably uh, did like a little uh, welcome uh, uh, dildo o'reilly right. Auto dildo parts, parts. Ow! <laughs> penis parts <laughs> so okay amelia Earhart has stopped here and now because obviously of the name other celebrities have stopped by um and this is where i now go into a deep dive i was not going to do these notes and not look up why the fuck this place is called dildo yeah um, well, yeah, yeah 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 so fun fact dildos have been a concept do you want to guess how long dildos have been around certainly well before probably the wheel <laughs> um i'm thinking uh, you're <laughs> thinking caveman era um I've, i don't know go ahead tell me uh since the ice age at the very least okay so yeah great so <laughs> almost thirty thousand years ago since the dinosaurs no not since quite. people realized they could get freaky with whatever's nearby i, I suppose mean, it must have been one of the first lessons they figured i mean out. you didn't have internet or books like you gotta get you gotta what kill time somehow do yeah um, so they've been around for, I think, 28,000 years. Jesus. But the word dildo itself did not always mean sex toy. Since right. the 1700s, the word dildo actually just meant any random cylindrical object. 
Really? So if it was a cylindrical object, it was a dildo. Dildo is such a funny word, like separated from being a sex thing. Like I know. dildo, like it already sounds very silly. Which is wild because like it's certainly of the things it is, it is not sexy. Like it's not like, oh, pass the me what? the dildo. 100%. 100%. That's you a know? great point. You would think it's like, dildo. Thought, oh, I know the perfect match. You would think a modern sex toy would have like a sexy thing. Like you would say, yeah. pass me the. I mean, honestly, blah, like blah, if blah. they just if they just called it the cylinder, like that Ooh, even sounds better mysterious. than a fucking dildo. Like, I mean, come on. dildo is pretty mysterious, I guess, but it sounds too silly that no one even cares about its mysteriousness. Exactly. It just sounds very unsexy, like you said. Uh, as we're talking about sexy, I, I, as I was doing, and you these and I notes, know what sounds sexy. So <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you, as the Charlotte of the podcast, yeah. <laughs> I know sexy. Uh, Allison came out this morning and saw me working on these notes, and then she went and she just saw at the top of the page it said "dildo monster," and she just went, <laughs> "Oh." <laughs> She like, she's like i'm gonna go back to my excel spreadsheet yeah, I'm she was so like sorry i even looked uh, looking forward to tuning in i guess um <laughs> oh no and you would think because she lives with me she would get like early intel but she very much was like i don't want to she's know. like i actually don't want that <laughs> i don't want any intel i regret looking at all so uh okay dildo means any random cylindrical object so any you you know what you now that you know this and blaze doesn't you should just mention anytime you see a cylindrical i mean my ld is that not a dildo oh my gosh you're right so i'll be like pass me the dildo and it'll just be like uh... i'm gonna put this dildo to my mouth and let the liquid just seep in (laughs) (laughs) drink it up okay i'm gonna pour the contents of this dildo straight in my mouth um (laughs) yeah i like i like that very much like just a street lamp. I'm trying to think of other things. I mean, really. you are teaching Leona shapes, no? Yeah, sure. I mean, say, I am now. That's a dildo. <laughs> that's, that's that's a rhombus, I think. That's your classic dildo, and that's your classic <laughs> rhombus. Thank God I'm here to teach you about All this. All she has to know is like circle, square, dildo, and then everything else is a rhombus because it's just... That sounds like correct to me. Yeah. I crunched the numbers, and I think they're correct. <laughs> Who taught you that line? Because that's hysterical, and you've said it twice. I can't stop saying it. I, I started saying it the other day, and I thought, that's funny. And I someone haven't... see you're teaching leona things while you're still you're learning from I'm learning so much um okay so yes cylindrical object so maybe the area was called dildo not to be funny but because like it had like a cylindrical shape yeah. or you know it could have been anything like that but um there are other theories as to why the town might have been called dildo one being that there is a local bush lol bush well, i was um, like oh wow this is this goes deep <laughs> this lore goes very deep uh there was a local shrubbery i should say yeah. um that was actually called a dildo tree and so it's kind of just is like it this our- one <laughs> honestly i think i looked like, up probably. dildo tree trying to s- i looked at dildo tree and guess what i found um a- <laughs> uh let me check because i just googled it also oops is it just a christmas tree covered in dildos because that's yeah, what i sure got it, actually whoa this one's a dildo in the shape of a christmas tree that looks painful oh. i will be honest with you um my understanding from the very limited actual information i could find uh was that a dildo tree is like a cactus of sorts oh okay interesting or at least it's cactus shaped which yeah a cactus is a dildo shaped tree I- Leona's like, I'm learning plants. I'm like, that's another dildo. She's like, I'm so confused. I thought a dildo was that street lamp outside. I mean, the best part really is a hot dog, shape wise. Listen, that's a dildo. Banana, you know, and it's a it wiener. And now it's and a it's dildo. A it's, is it is it a real wiener or a fake wiener? Now I don't even know. I'm gonna hold Oscar Mayer on... weigh in. <laughs> I'm gonna hold off on uh, <laughs> having this conversation with Leona on second thought. <laughs> um, so it could be named after a tree, just like how like we have Joshua Tree, and it's named oh my after God, the Joshua it. Tree. What is it? Is it's it cactus? literally a common name used for several species of long, narrow cactus, and then they have like different types of. Oh, it's the ones where they have like little. They go like this. Oh, the classics. But not even from like. They're like, hmm, let me send you a picture. Oh, it like they all start from the root. Yes, yes, exactly. It's like three like fingers they look coming like out a of the ground. Bunch of dildos coming out of the ground. Ah, a little menage a, a trois, if you will. I mean, well, more more than trois. I it's, think it's more it's like the orgy tree. Seventeen in uh, 
in French. <laughs> die Here's set. A <laughs> oh, wait. Wow. Good Menage job. a die set. Um, oh, my God. That's beautiful. Um, anyway, I sent a picture to the you. group. Uh, and then, oh, my God. What? Imagine seeing this and going, yep, that's a dildo. Hold on. Oh. I'm sending this to the group right now. This is on the Wikipedia for Oh my a God. dildo cactus. See, this is the exact opposite of a dildo. This that is, is what you would re really have to run away from. Way to um, exfoliate. Thank God it was during the ice the inside age, of you. and there weren't giant cacti to experiment <sighs> with. Yeah, they look like those fake hot dogs out in nature that are on a stick near the pond. Oh yeah, those are always so rude. Um, which also is a dildo. I mean, by definition. So you're, you're exactly right. Speaking of French um another theory of why this place is called dildo is because it might stem from french or the french term il do which is island of water oh well that also tracks it could also mean a it could come from the old spanish word for the bottom of a boat which i tried looking up what the hull of a boat is in spanish and it didn't look like anything resembling dildo so <laughs> it wasn't dildo okay i don't know if that one lands um and then they also think it could be italian which is uh it could be a bastardization of the word okay. diletto which means delight oh that's cute so maybe you say diletto enough times you say dildo 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 i can so. see that since it's a nautical town, it could also stem Wait, from... So there's probably not cacti there then. Right? That's what I understand. But maybe yeah, there was a, a plant that looked like it at, right. in the uh, 1700s. That's true. It, that's true. It could have just been a different... Yeah. Um, but since it's a nautical town, because it's like a very maritime... It's a small boating fishing town. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it could be named after the cylindrical-shaped pegs on boat oars, which they are oh. the shape of a dildo cylindrical shape pegs okay sure so that's another theory or it could be everyone's favorite theory which um let me double check my text and make sure i haven't forgotten anything yet nope perfect okay i just want to make sure that i say it all you're gonna love this okay so <laughs> everyone's on the edge of my seat <laughs> everyone's favorite theory is that so the name the town has been called dildo since 1711 at least that's the earliest documentation we have of it wow okay um which is why i gave the whole history of what dildo even means right because so in the 1700s it dildo. could have just meant cylindrical right and it just this... is very funny that they didn't know what they were doing when they named the town but they might have because so the first time the town was documented it was dildo island and dildo did have an e at the end i'll say so oh, it, okay maybe it had nothing to do with dildos at all but um, the explorer and land surveyor who came into this town, his name was Captain James Cook. And Captain Cook, he was the surveyor of Newfoundland and him and his assistant named Michael, which I like to think it was Michael Scott when you hear the rest of this. Um, <laughs> they had the job of not only documenting and mapping out the land, but naming all the parts of the land Stop as well. Stop it. And they loved seventh grade humor no it's thought that they were just naming places in hopes to make each other laugh and then writing it down so they wouldn't forget where they were going and they were like oh well maybe the thought was like oh we'll write an actual name later but for now let's just call it this thing <laughs> and so no! here are some other examples yes, of please. things that they named <laughs> on dildo or near dildo there is tickle bay okay there is Cuckold's Cove. No way. <laughs> Con Conception Bay. Stop. Gay Side, which probably meant Happy Side at the time. Gay side. Blow Me Down. No. Spread Eagle Island. Two He's islands that they named Our Ladies Bubbies and then renamed them to The Twins. You're kidding me. And then farther up the coast is Ass Rock. Stop. And literally just spelled A S S space rock. Um, That's when they like ran out of the jokes. They were like, let's just call this one ass rock and move on. I, I, so I imagine they, that was the situation, but then they even had another one called, it was something called like um, leading tickles or something where it was very, um, it's badly sensual. Um, <laughs> badly sensual. <laughs> so anyway, they, they named all of the areas, those things. That, and what are the odds it's in I'm a town called Dildo? Immediately convinced. Like, there is no way you can unconvince me of that at this point. Cuckold's, it's also, wait, what was the other one? Wait, the one that shocked me the most, I think. Cuckold's Cove. Not Cuckold's Cove. 
there was one a few Tickle later. Bay. Oh, no. uh, Conception Bay, Gay Side, Blow Me Down, Spread Eagle Island. Spread, Spread Eagle. Eagle. Spread e- there is no I way, mean, come on. even in the 1700s, that Spread Eagle didn't have some sort of connotation. And then the, and, all the other ones, come on. And on top of it, so this is uh, the the main area called Dildo, and it was the largest of three islands to get to Dildo Tip. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's come like on. right there. <laughs> and so what I think happened is that this town was maybe called Dildo Island with an E, and it actually didn't was either like a bastardization of a different language or it was cylindrical shaped. I And I think he was a 12 year old and he got on the island and went, ha ha, dildo, oh, dildo. Ha, and dildo. It's, it started the, oh, the gears of him saying all these shitty oh, little M, kid things. That makes so much sense. That's my guess. I, I, there's no, makes there's no so... written word of that, but I no, mean, like, that makes so much sense. It's like, Oh, the island started it. It's called Dildo. Yeah, I what feel was like I he was supposed to do. I feel like he was like, oh, I am actually here to do a job. And then he saw that the island was called Dildo. And he was like, well, today is going to be a fun day yeah. of work. Yes, finally. Yeah. I get to be creative. Wow. It's I like, think... oh, well, what would be a Dildo Island? Obviously, Cuckold's Cove. You yeah, know? So... and Spread Eagle and Ass Rock. I mean, come on. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. I think that's what happened. Because that's if you think about theory. it. As much as people say, oh, Captain Cook named the place, that was in the 1760s, and there's documentation of Dildo Island from 1711. Right. So, okay, so they had already named it that for whatever reason. And he's mm-hmm. like, oh, Dildo. Oh, my God. M, you get it. I think you I figured it out. You know how a teenage boy works. I just had work. to deal with like 100 of them last I know, night. they're everywhere. Um, so some people have petitioned to change the name of the island, but so many of the locals... Love it, especially because it brings in tourism for their small fishing town. Yeah, but yeah. They're I like, mean, I'm not going to change it. Grown to just like it, not feel weird about it, you know. I mean, when you live in a town called Dildo, I think you just don't, don't even hear it as Dildo it. anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, so guess what? I finally bullied Eva into buying all of her entire wardrobe from Quince because it's about time she gets on the bandwagon. She was literally wearing one while we recorded just I now. know. Uh, <laughs> Damn, that's our personal endorsement right there. <laughs> yeah, Quince is the perfect fall cozy vibe. Uh, Eva has the cashmere fisherman crew sweater. I think all of us actually have the cashmere fisherman crew sweater. I also sweater. think that. Yes, um, it's a classic. It's a dream. We look yeah. like Rory Gilmore. It's perfect. Especially when <laughs> all three of us are together, we're just the Gilmore girls. It's so. just layers upon layers, yes. Of I Quince. call the grandma, so. Yeah, oh, good. You deserve it. <laughs> um, anyway, we love everything we've gotten from Quince. I have bedding, towels. I mean, everything you could possibly imagine. It's actually kind of alarming how my tr- house has turned into a, a Quince um, depot, I think. Anyway, Quince is known for their mom. Mongolian cashmere sweaters from $50. And it's not just that. All Quince items are actually priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices. And of course, premium fabrics and finishes for that luxury feel in every piece. Get cozy in Quince's high quality wardrobe essentials. Go to quince.com slash drink for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash drink to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince dot com slash drink. So with today's tourism, one of Dildo's most precious traditions to the visitors is, um, so if we went to Dildo, you and me. When we go to Dildo, you mean? When we go to Dildo. Let's speak it into existence. (laughs) There is uh, I'm going to be driving you through Texas next week. I'm going to be like, I got to refuel. I'm going to take a quick detour. (laughs) Okay, Amelia. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to just do a quick refuel in the rental car up in Dildo. Well, so there is a ceremony that uh, the locals host for visitors coming Mm -hmm. in to make them honorary Newfoundlanders. Newfoundlanders. Um, And it is called a screech in. What? And a screech in, it's a ceremony where visitors and newcomers drink for the first time the local drink called screech. And it is a <laughs> very high alcohol rum. Some sources said it was up to 80 proof. Screech. And uh, basically the way that screech came about is that uh, a long time ago, Newfoundland would trade cod with Jamaica for their rum. Oh, interesting. And so what made this really special, though, this was like actually such a smart business move, is that uh, these bottles of Screech in Jamaica, it was this this rum in Jamaica, they would make it at 140 proof alcohol. And it was not meant to be drank like that. It was more of a concentrate that you dilute later. Wow, that is smart. But the reason that they would do it that way is because uh, 
if they made it that potent, you could save money by shipping either less bottles of it right, or, right. or you could ship a normal amount of bottles, but you would have like quadruple the amount of alcohol in yeah, those bottles. Yeah, it makes total sense. So it allegedly got its name Screech because uh, a non-Newfoundlander uh, came to town and saw <laughs> locals drinking it. And I guess they were in, I don't know, in his mind, he was like, I have to keep up with this guy and he's drinking a lot. And so he saw that he was drinking Screech and he was like, oh, I'll take a shot of Screech. And he didn't know it was 140 proof. <gasps> and so he took a shot of 140 proof booze and he screamed and someone in the bar was like, what was that Screech? <gasps> and the that's local great. apparently that's said, great. the Screech tis the rum of like, oh, that <laughs> yeah. scream, that you know, was like, fucking Like we alcohol. all would say at the bar after somebody <laughs> just... <laughs> Wait, okay, so is the, po- is the idea then that they they received this rum but they didn't know that it was a concentrate or they just liked I to think drink he was it just a an- concentrate i don't totally know if people drink it as a concentrate if they do i think it's oh. just for this ceremony i think the, the point is that oh we're gonna make it really high alcohol so that way you get four times the amount of alcohol when it gets to you and then you can dilute it and have four times the amount of drinks that the right bottle but would so usually it, give you. is the like then, traditional drink just the original 140 proof I, well ceremony? now now i think um because it's easier to ship things it it looks like it's at at the highest it's like 80 proof so it's oh, okay okay on the level of like a moonshine or something right so it's just um, a type of rum basically that they're drinking. yeah and okay. it, it, screech also now is like loosely used for all high content kind of cheaper rum gotcha okay okay um interesting so if you see screech in stores i know like new england also sells it and other I parts like, of never canada heard of that apparently it's not specifically this newfoundland I jamaican see. rum anymore it's okay uh, you know it's it can just mean means kinda high any... alcohol yeah okay so back to these screech inns uh this like ceremony that the yeah. the locals will host there they do them a lot of times at um like uh local bars like there's a there's a brewery that's big on in the town and it's called dildo brewery by the way <laughs> of course <laughs> and also the town also does like boat excursions for for tourists so they'll do screeching sometimes on the boats okay and it's this initiation ceremony where native newfoundland newfoundlanders welcome tourists as honorary newfoundlanders Aww. and it happens uh it starts with a the leader of the ceremony the masters of ceremonies i think that's what they're called uh <laughs> They are they run the screech in by wearing often like a yellow fisherman coat or like a fisherman hat, like the Ooh, classic one that yeah, you would see yeah. like Paddington wearing or something. Yes. And he's like You're, supposed what do you call to it, be a Mac? Something. Ooh. I don't know the right word. Okay, but anyway. He basically he pokes fun and he's like kind of joking around with the whole crowd. That's the, the whole thing is like he's he's like making jest with right, you. Yeah. The MC. The MC, exactly. And sometimes he will also make visitors wear the same clothing. So they'll have like a fisherman's hat or a raincoat to put on. And first thing the leader will do is sometimes say like a, a poem that's local to the town or tell a local story. Here is one of the common poems that they will tell the tourists at the mm-hmm. beginning of the ceremony. From the waters of the Avalon to the shores of Labrador, we've always stuck together with a rant and with a roar. To those who've never been, soon they'll understand. From coast to coast, we raise a toast. We love the new Finland. Oh, that's really nice. And after this, a lot of the ceremonies will then have you eat a new fee steak, new Finland steak, which is new a slice fee. of bologna. It's a slice Wait, of really? Bologna. Um, <laughs> and then sometimes also like it'll like bread or something. They It's just to like, oh, here's some. I guess local food. I should have done a deep dive of like what the hell new fee steak is. Um, Oscar Mayer weigh in again. Mm -hmm. So next to show gratitude to the fish and the fishing industries that built the town of Dildo, they bring out a actual frozen fish for you to kiss. But if you are, but if you're too squeamish, they will also, they have a stuffed penguin and you can kiss the stuffed penguin. Um, I wonder how many people actually kiss the fish. I th- I think a lot of people. Um, I did I a guess... field trip when I was in high school where we were like on a marsh for a weekend, and they had us all kiss a fish. Wait, really? Yeah, I refused to do it because I was. Of course you did, because you're terrified. S- smart. <laughs> I also I'm so scared of fish. I know. You are, um, I know. But uh, yeah, I would have been like, bring me the plushy penguin. Bring me now. the penguin. <laughs> 
Um, so after you then thank the fishing gods, I suppose, for bringing all this. For making out so well. For, for doing so well with a dildo. Uh-huh. Um, sometimes they'll also make you stand barefoot in a bucket of salt water or something. It's kind of like just making like, it's like Little baby, rituals. baby, baby hazing, like silly yeah, stuff that like everyone yeah. can laugh together with. Like, oh, now put your foot in the salt water. Some like tradition there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cute. And then apparently he always asks either are you, is you a Newfoundlander or the more um, slangy local way of saying it is, is ye a screecher? <gasps> I love that. And then you're supposed to respond. I hope they have it like on a poster somewhere because I would not be able to remember this. Oh, no, it's long. It's not long. It's just in this like slang, this old oh, slang. But oh, I don't what know. What is it? Indeed, I is me old cock, and long may your big jib draw. Which That's very I, long. <laughs> I can't remember that. I certainly wouldn't remember it. it no. Apparently, it means, uh, yes, I am, and may your sails always catch wind. That's nice. That's lovely. Yeah. So, finally, then everyone takes a shot of Screech together, and visitors are then, depending on the location you do this at, some places will give you a certificate for being an honorary <laughs> Newfoundlander. <laughs> You know, you and I would be like, we're waiting for the printer to work again so we can, we're not leaving without our certificate. <laughs> I'd be like, I came here specifically because Yelp told me I would get a certificate. I would get a certificate. Please don't make important. me kiss another fish at another no, location please. who will get a better I, review I, from me. Like, yeah. em, here, I'll handle this. M is really scared of fish and you made them kiss an actual dead fish or live fish. I don't even know. Live it's, is it's frozen. It's usually frozen. Oh, it's frozen. Okay, and thank dead. God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, Let's rethink this printer situation, shall we? It, I would slip them a $1 bill and be like, I think you want what I'd got here. I'd be like, <laughs> hey, add your credit card to DoorDash. I'll order you a new printer. <laughs> and here's the um, dollar. <laughs> the last thing I'll say about the town, well, the second to last thing. Remember I told you eventually a cryptid shows up. I was going to say, I I've, can't stop. I've, I've yet to be surprised once again by the dildo monster. Well, in the town of Dildo, every summer, and usually it's the last week of July, the town hosts a festival called Dildo Day. <laughs> <laughs> sure <laughs> or dildo days or because oh it's dildo days because sometimes it lasts several days i mean when you've got a good dildo you gotta how really, could it not yeah you, you get sometimes the most you can't use stop. out of it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you know um, <laughs> the fun just never ends with, with yeah, dildo you know that's what they say that should be on a fucking shirt i'll tell you that um <laughs> the fun never ends at dildo. fun fact in case anyone is listening to all the samanthas out there uh actual national sex toy dildo day is september 7th so oh. have fun with that we missed it. Uh, <laughs> well, for these dildo days, it is led by the town's mascot, because of course I've got a mascot. Oh my it God. It is a statue in the classic yellow fisherman's jacket. His name is, of course, Captain Dildo. Um, mm. I have a picture for you of Captain, Captain Dildo. Captain Dildo. <laughs> because I was not going to not show you a picture of Captain Dildo. I was wondering if like that could have been someone's name way back in like the 17, 16, 17. You Honestly, I mean? it could have been, yeah um so there's captain dildo i feel like I oh had my gosh <laughs> and so this is one picture where he I looks like him. actually better if you look up captain dildo there's two dildos or two captains <laughs> whoa um, freudian slip no i'm kidding <laughs> but so there's two of them one of them looks a little more worse for the wear so i'm thinking he might be the original and then oh, this is like been... a new one by the water i gotcha um but apparently i saw someone on reddit say that they remember the day that the statue was installed so they used to they were there for the day that the statue was installed, mm. and he remembers townspeople calling it the Captain Dildo's erection. Stop like, <laughs> being erected. <laughs> I mean, these people are geniuses. I mean, it's Captain something else. Captain Dildo's erection is really good. <laughs> Please don't miss the erection. The big, the big the dildo erection. No, the erection. <laughs> Listen. Are yeah. you not listening to me? Okay, so uh merchandise at dildo days of course it has to be 10 out of 10 of course I, the shirts i i have already been on all of the gift shops of that town's websites yeah, and yeah. i tell you i know exactly what i want from every single one of them fantastic um and if we ever have uh honestly even like a main or like some sort of like new england show i think i'm about to just take the ferry over to dildo at this point like i can't not have a shirt that I says think dildo I'm- crashing your dildo party yeah, well dildo days see now we missed crashing that too dildo days oh man <sighs> but um one of the most popular things that people buy at dildo days is not dildos but is a shirt that says i survived dildo days 
Because <laughs> that's sure a wild ride. Like, I didn't survive, actually. <laughs> it was a little too much for me. I actually had to leave the group. I had to, yeah. I had to go home because Dildo well, Days was too intense. It. Couldn't make it. Events at Dildo Days includes a scavenger hunt, which I hope it's X-rated, but I just, mm. I know it's not because it seems you like a family not, town. But, but I'd like, I, but I'd you like, want it to be. I would like the uh, the twenty somethings to th- throw their own secret scavenger. I was gonna hunt. say a secret one, yeah. Uh, I mean, imagine having a bachelorette party in Dildo. You have to no. like, come on, come on, come on. Um, so there's a scavenger hunt. There's a teddy bear hunt, which I don't know what that's about, but okay. There's mm. bingo, which you and I would decimate. Ugh. There is a cold plate sale, which I think means like chicken salads and shit. I love that um there's a bake sale there's an afternoon tea there's a quilt day this is so wholesome fireworks for, for being called dildo days <laughs> i know fireworks and a fishing derby which it didn't... literally sounds like they said watch everyone's gonna think we're gonna do like dildo contests i nope. know we're gonna make it so wholesome that it's confusing why it's called dildo days it's like it, it feels like everyone's like old sea shanty irish grandpa got together and just decided to and said like the good old days yeah, yeah we have our cold salad and let's play checkers on the deck come on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and apparently some other ones which i thought were more intriguing to me one event is called songs skits and a scoff which Ooh. that just feels like a medieval jester named that and they never changed sure, it sure does more on par with how you and i think uh at dildo days you can also expect cornhole lol <gasps> fun. wet wet and wild fun day which was okay. vaguely not detailed to me a little too vague i imagine a bunch of people are going to show up and be very embarrassed it's gonna be that bachelorette party wet and wild day be- at dildo <laughs> and it's a <laughs> wet t-shirt contest <laughs> lol also motorboating very funny i was gonna say do you not know what motorboating is no uh, i do i was trying to th- i was trying to figure out if you meant like Actual which one <laughs> yeah it is actual mean, motorboating like, but you know the actual boat but like it's a play on words but got there's it. gotta be a shirt that says i motorboated at wet and wild fun day at in dildo there has to be there and then i'm gonna write got so it'll say i got motorboated <laughs> dildo fun day oh what did i say i motorboated yeah but that one would make more sense because like if you were driving a motorboat it's like oh no i'm motor- yeah mm-hmm. and i'm gonna well, wear the one that says i got motorboated it'll be great and then the final event at Dildo Days is a, a church, of course. It's um, church. They're like, we've <laughs> sinned, actually. We need to fix that. Okay, the last fun fact I'm going to tell you about uh, is that Jimmy Kimmel got wind of this town, obviously. Oh, of course he did. And he had the town council on his show to ask no. them about Dildo. And he then asked, oh, like, do you have a mayor? And they said no. This set off quite a like five series bit on his show where he I began feel that i remember this very vaguely he began his mayoral campaign uh, opposed uh, 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 f- against nobody it running was just him. unopposed right? running unopposed um abc apparently spent like a hundred thousand dollars to campaign in dildo Stop. and i'm assuming that money like went to the dildo and like helped their tourism I or something like so. that i mean being on the show five times in a row was certainly tourism enough for them yes, but true um anyway it became like a weird viral bit for jimmy kimmel stands where they watched him campaigning in dildo um and there was a lot of shirts that said dildos for jimmy uh it said uh it said jimmy hearts dildo and basically there were signs all over the town that said jimmy hearts dildo and he even pitched merch that said there's a little dildo in all of us come on that's really good at some point, Matt Damon got involved, and he, he was would. also campaigning to be a mayor there. Um, he wow. did not uh, end up on top of the dildo. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, but the town took it very seriously. They went back on the show a few times, and ultimately, they I think they actually did a screech-in on the show. <gasps> Cute. Uh, with his uh, his assistant. I always forget what his uh, name is. G- uh, g- 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 yes. G- okay. Guillermo. Guillermo. Um, and ultimately, they made Jimmy the first honorary mayor there never been a mayor in Dildo. wow so they actually did it that's wow so not only is he the first honorary mayor but the local brewery dildo brewery they made a beer after him called the kim ale kim ale kim ale cute um they what else oh because they were on the jimmy 
Kimmel show, one of the residents wrote a song about Dildo and then got to perform it on the Jimmy, Ki- Jimmy Kimmel show. Cute. And it was a song about Dildo where um, half the lyrics are him basically doing like L is for the way you look at me. O is. Yeah. So he, but he did Dildo. D stands for dignity. <laughs> I wasted opportunity to say dignity. Wow. Yeah. Um, bummer. Uh, then I'm going to skip I first. But L was Liberty, the D, the other D is days of old, and O is the thing that finishes out the whole word so we can all say dildo. And I, innocent child, <laughs> in dildo. What? Doesn't that feel weird? I feel like if I looked over the lyrics about dildo and then innocent child was one of the five phrases I used, I'd change it to like hmm. integrity or... There's some other I words. Yeah. Individuality. So what about or, innocence? You don't have to specify kids. Yeah, they said like the innocent child uh, who should never be ashamed or something. That was the, the lyric, I think. But I was just like, that's, I would have done a run over on that. I would have. Yeah, just a quick like red line. scan. What, so what's the O? I was confused about the O. Oh, the O is, it just says like an O finishes it basically. Oh, oh, okay. okay, Which, okay. I thought LOL. you were saying that. LOL. Was... They should have said O, like orgasm. O or, finishes yeah, right. it. Maybe that is what they're saying. No, it's it's something I don't remember. I don't have not the lyrics with in front innocent child. Certainly not with innocent <laughs> child. That is true. Uh, it's like it's like an O rounds it out. Basically, is what those. Oh, those okay, are. rounds it out. That's cute. Oh, rounds it out. I'm I'm paraphrasing. You keep give, you keep giving me compliments on what I'm saying. It's, that's not the actual lyrics. Well, your but, version's um, better. <laughs> thank you. See, all he needed was one writer's room session with me, and I would have said innocent child out. But there's a innocent lot I have to say child. about the O. The it big O. It makes us feel very weird. The big O is <laughs> is in. Um. So anyway, because uh they were on jimmy's show and because like now the brewery is named after jimmy there were posters everywhere there was merch still if you go online you will find if you look up (laughs) dildo merch it will be jimmy's face um and a lot of it actually by the way is from if it's not a a jimmy kimmel merch most of the dildo brewery merch you'll see or most of the dildo merch you'll see online is from dildo brewery so of course i got you pajama pants from dildo brewery that say dildo on them you did not of course I did. What am I? I'm so idiot? happy. I'm I'm so happy right now. <laughs> uh, so it just imagine says, I get like a like a an email saying like from FedEx like your package is on the your package from like <laughs> dildo is on the way and Blaze would be like what are you ordering? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um it says dildo brewery in case anyone sees you wearing something that says dildo. But I got you pajama pants because I was like just in case you don't want to wear is... the word dildo outside. I do. Um, Thank you. Okay, well then I should have gotten you the shirt. No, but... no, I love it. I'm gonna wear my pajama pants outside. Speaking of Innocent Child, they also had children's shirts that said Dildo Brewery, which I get as a location name, but it still feels weird as an outsider. Feels, feels like at school they would not allow that. Uh, yeah. Um, well, so uh, anyway, go check out that Dildo song on YouTube if you'd like. And the uh, the next thing I'm going to say is that Jimmy Kimmel actually uh, honorarily uh, named Dildo a sister city to Hollywood. Oh. And because he did that on the show, I, ABC must have paid for this. But they say Jimmy Kimmel sent the town of Dildo, um, like how we have Hollywood as a as a sign. Yes, they installed a Hollywood sign in the hills that says Dildo. That which fun wasted opportunity to not have wood at the end of it like Hollywood Dildo, Dildo wood. wood that's is good. Yeah, um, that could be the so, yearly prank, the high senior prank every year. That should be. Yeah. Um, I have a picture of that for you also. So here is the oh sign gosh, of love to Dildo. See it uh a sister city to hollywood is oh <laughs> my god it's honestly better than i could have imagined it's it's very because it looks so classic i know wow I know. that's great and it lights up at night and everything just like the real uh. hollywood sign uh but uh, anyway so that is uh that's the history of dildo i gotta tell you of all the stores i really need to go to nan and pop's dildo souvenir shop where <laughs> they nan have a shirt they have a shirt with like a really innocent child like uh smiley face that says i got my dildo souvenir <laughs> wow wow it's like half the time i think they're playing into the joke and half the time i'm like no they're not playing you know what i mean i can't I figure really, it out i really can't tell because i will say for those wondering you cannot buy a dildo in dildo wasted opportunity Nowhere? yet not again even like there's probably like an underground dealer right there's got to be someone with one of those trench coats full of dildos <laughs> yes there's gotta be <laughs> but i mean no it, i mean this really what is if he like did, but they were all just the pegs for that boat he's like oh i thought you meant 
<laughs> like the ones for the boat. Actually, it's okay. just a bunch of liquid death in my jacket. I don't... <laughs> Honestly, then I'll pay for it. That sounds good. It um yeah well I mean the town really is like twelve hundred people they're all just like fishermen like it's right when, when you go the coolest thing you can do there is probably get a picture with that sign and go to the brewery like I it it has like two gift shops it's a very small town like very quaint small, they're not right. taking advantage of this dildo situation right right like it's kind of better almost I feel like it makes it more pure you know like it just feels. They literally, by the way, uh, they had a a scandal a few years ago where a sex toy company literally went and took like like promotional content <gasps> in dildo, and then like the town of dildo was like, we hate that, don't do it. So you can't do that. Well, I think they were just like in dildo. Oh, and I guess they were you just can do that. Yeah, and they're just like, we're in dildo, and here I are our they sex were products. Like, use like the imagery of the like captain dildo or something no but. i think they were standing by like a, one of the road signs that said this way to dildo or something um, i mean that's pretty good marketing i gotta be honest like if you I, saw that and you made sex toys you'd be like i have to take this picture yeah i don't i don't totally blame the person for trying uh yeah. i'd be like well if i sell dildos and i live near dildo i'm obviously going to do something about that it makes total sense but then they ended up like saying she couldn't do that so mm. i don't they're very um prim and proper yeah i, think. I see so I would, if it were me, if I were the actual, if I were Jimmy Kimmel and the true mayor of Dildo, I'd be like, all right, sex shop, let's go. I know it's like, so not what you want, but yeah, you think about like, the economy. You would gentrify <laughs> it is what you're saying, but in the weirdest way, the weirdest, most specific way. You're just going to move no in. with no consent, I suppose. Yeah, I, yeah. You're just going to push everyone out and b- build a giant sex warehouse. It, it would just be a like a trust me situation. I'd be like, how about we just try this for a year? And if I'm wrong, we take it down. How and about all that? the ladies quilting in church are going to really <laughs> love it. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> I think you got. I would just be the villain of dildo for like uh, like one one calendar year. What you just said made you the villain of dildo. If anyone gets wind of this, you are going to be enemy number one. I would bow out. I I I I would shake hands on good faith. I'll bow out if I'm wrong in a year. But I just I just let me just send you the business plan. You just tell me what you think. Well, I just send you some projections. Glossy. Take it's glossy, and it says that we're gonna bop bop bop. You know, like this town is gonna grow, baby. I don't know. We'll see. It seems like we need to find a new angle because that doesn't seem to be their goal. But they don't seem to care. They are very happy with their very small town, which think, is lovely. I think they kind of I think I kind of like how they're just in their own little space. I think with my um, I, I feel like I could like there's just so many uh, sideways. There's so there's so many like creative things you could do. And I'm just like, how could you not even want to? think about it for a second but i also get what they like they probably just want to keep their town as it is i'm so, sure there's probably a little pocket of people who make it kind of fun i like to think at like at the local bar they just have like a like a piece of paper that locals come in just write their ideas down in case you just people, like get anyone it out changes of your their system mind. you know yeah. what i mean you have a pint and you get it out of your system yeah and they're like dildo shop ah and then they just kind of scream it out and they're like okay. giant dildo ah yeah <laughs> so uh during their appearance oh the song blah, blah, blah. okay so now on to the actual dildo monster the story is pretty short Jeez. so i'm glad i gave yeah, you yeah the dildo most monster the... oh my god he's back so all ah, of this <laughs> dildo monster was that something somebody put in the suggestion box like at the very least on halloween someone should dress up as a massive fucking dildo at the very least for a dildo monster come on yeah i mean listen i, I would be into it i think um i would not want to explain to any children what that is but you know if, again if this else is would... this is like the underground i'm pretending children don't exist in this narrative oh i see okay yeah then then i hear what you it. heard and now that's awful no so I'll... only in your <laughs> only in your sex warehouse that you're going to build and uh displace all the local residents only for a year though um so in there we can wear the dildo costume okay. you know you're you're on to it yeah you like again thank god i don't actually have the 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 urge or the power or the ability to do any of this but in my <laughs> brain if let's put it this way if someone were to if dildo were to go away and but the town name stuck and i could go play sims in that area and just build my own land it would be oddly weird it would be yeah, well, it would yeah. live up to the yeah. dildo name this feels yeah it feels like for a minute there you're going into like the x-rated version of the lorax where mm. you kind of just decide like th- actually this is gonna really 
monetarily benefit me um i'm gonna put dildos everywhere you've really laid a good foundation for me thank you yeah i, I never Time said to go <laughs> i never said this hypothetical was ethical let's be no, clear yeah um, certainly not yeah <laughs> never claimed that hypothetical um, ethical hypotheticals are no fun no 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 no. when we're playing pretend we're going all out when we're playing um, roller coaster tycoon people are getting launched off of that buckle up or get lost or get, get stick it stuck behind into the parking lot This holiday season, give yourself or someone you love the gift of glowing skin. I am so excited about this ad. I've been itching to talk about this. Most at-home options don't deliver real results and feel uncomfortable. That's why Iristore developed their innovative Illumina face mask. I need you to know, Em, I, I traveled with this. When I went downstairs to get this for this ad, I had to get it out of my duffel bag because I've been using it on tour. This thing I've used, this is like the, the most I've used an actual like beauty product consecutively. Like I put it in my little habit tracker and I use it every single evening. And right before bed, I'm like, this is my new like little, but it has, it, you don't have to plug it in, right? So mm -hmm. you can just walk around the house with it on. Oh my God. It's a I game gotta changer. Be honest, you also look like an Avenger. So, you know, side When I wear it or <laughs> after I wear it. This is the only mask that shines red, infrared and blue light all at once. So it tackles wrinkles, acne and inflammation. And iRestore's Illumina face mask is lightweight, breathable and adjustable. Plus it comes, like you said, with a portable battery oh, pack so you can glow on the go so that's that's whether you're... i'm gonna start saying that now glow on the go give the gift of confidence to yourself or someone you love for a limited time only check out their huge black friday sale our listeners get hundreds of dollars off their illumina face mask with our exclusive link at irestorelaser.com forward slash we drink that's hundreds off the illumina face mask at irestorelaser with an s laser dot com slash we drink so okay the reason i say that this story is very short is because literally one half page article in a newspaper is the only source we've got pretty much really there's um there's a few books on it like uh that people have kind of done deeper dives into but if you're looking for like a proper source uh, like a direct source there's only one newspaper article okay um so the town of dildo has a cryptid in its midst mid midst and in it's what <laughs> <laughs> And this is the monster of Dildo Pond, or I lovingly call it the Dildo Monster. Of course, as you should. Which, I'm sorry, children, but Halloween happened yesterday. I got monsters on the brain. Dildo Monster would be crazy. That would um, win some sort of costume contest. Certainly. Or, again, perhaps get you disqualified. It really depends on the context <laughs> of the contest. Or uh, kicked out of the entire town. Just exiled. Yeah, just exiled. So the story's main source comes from an article from 1950, and this paper tried to name the cryptid the Dildo Sus. Dild okay. Maybe it was, maybe if quickly it's supposed to sound like Dildosus. Dildosus? Or what about Dildosus? And it was Dildo slash S-U-S. Like slash or like a hyphen? Sorry, dash. S-U-S. Oh. Dildosus. Dildosus? That's weird. That's weird. Yeah. Dildosus. Well, it obviously didn't fucking stick because people yeah, now know it right? as the monster of Dildo Pond. They were like, let's regroup. <laughs> Who? What were you thinking? <laughs> In the 1950s, uh, Dildo claimed their cryptid was bigger and at more uh, a higher chance of being real compared to other Canadian cryptids. So the people came out of Dildo with a lot of um, a lot of smack talk. Came out about, swinging. Yeah. Yeah. They said, oh, Ogopogo? I don't fucking think so. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I love that uh, like a town named Dildo is like, we're the biggest, we're the baddest. It's like, oh, relax. <laughs> it's like, okay, You've stop shoving it down my thing. throat, Dildo. Yeah. You know? Oh my God, that was good. <laughs> so in the 1890s, this is the first time that we've, uh, there was ever a witness to this monster. And it was this guy who was new to town. His name was Nielsen. Okay. He was the first person to see this monster. He, he, let's talk about Nielsen for a second. His hobbies include crossbreeding fish eggs and having a group of pet ducks that followed him I, around. honestly half of that i can really relate i know i love crossbreeding fish eggs um <laughs> so one day he heard his ducks freaking out near dildo pond and saw a large black fish coming at them as they well, were sitting on crossbreeding these things he's creating a monster hold that thought uh he so he saw this large black fish showing up out of nowhere and approaching the bank okay the, uh, when it got near the surface and it was big enough that Nielsen saw this thing and the duck saw it for sure, 
everyone ran. The Ducks ran. Nielsen ran. And when I say ran, like Nielsen literally left town. He was like, I just moved he here. This is one of the of first town. things. <laughs> Wait, did he bring the Ducks? I don't. We never heard, hear about the Ducks again. So I'm hoping no! so. Um, but he, I, I love that he was new to town. He just put his like suitcase down. He saw one thing he didn't like, and he was like, red flag immediately. Let's I feel leave. like his Ducks, he's like, go play outside. And the Ducks were like, there's a scary thing. And he's like, we're all out. Bye. We tried it. <laughs> I sent you out on your way. You're not safe here, ducks. Apparently, as he left town, he warned others of what he just saw in Dildo Pond. And he was like, I'm out of here. Fucking where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I don't I'll know. never believe what I saw. But he was like, it was scary enough that I would rather just re-uproot right away. Wow. Okay. After that, the monster only gets seen every now and then by people who spend time near the pond. Basically, in the 1930s through the 1950s, that's when most people saw this thing. One guy saw the fish. Uh, Everyone seems to see this fish when it's like just swimming up to the bank and then swimming away. That's kind of the whole thing. It's like, oh, it approaches and then it leaves like any other fucking fish, you know? Hmm. So but everyone's really freaked out, I think, by its size. Anyway, so um where were we this oh yeah so one guy saw the fish and claimed it was as big as a rowboat and (laughs) but but nobody believed him when he went to go tell people because he was old they were like well well, okay grandpa you know it was like because you're old that's not nice you're like you're obviously senile if you saw a fish as big as a boat and i'm like has nobody seen a fish as big as the boat okay but okay um another time two guys saw it together but people didn't believe them because they thought they were fucked up on screech um (laughs) And then another witness was by the pond when he heard splashing in the water. He looks around and he sees the monster. And it's reported that so far of these witnesses, they, quote, didn't like the gleam in its watery eyes. And they thought it, quote, had a hungry look in its eyes. So they're already thinking this fucker's going to eat me. That's like oh my Lord. what they're scared of. The dildo just, monster. I mean... The, yeah, the dildo's you, gonna get you. I'll tell you. I was gonna say, if you're I not can, careful, she's she's gonna. Didn't we talk about this around. before? I'm having a very weird flashback. Do we talk about this with like two girls, one ghost, or something? That uh, feels like something or we would wine do. And crime. Oh, no, like, wine I and feel, crime. It feels like a wine and crime conversation, doesn't it? Like I feel this weird tickle in the back of my brain yeah. that's like, hey, remember the dildo monsters rooting up in there, getting inside yeah, you? I think he's back there. I really do, but I could be wrong. But if anybody has heard that, let me know. I'm curious if I'm just having a weird like deja vu, <laughs> which I would probably have about the, t- the dildo monster. <laughs> Sometimes you, the dildo's on the brain. I get it. I guess so. So they described the monster, uh, all these people collectively. It turns out the monster had big bulging eyes, uh, had a barrel sized body, a slimmer neck, slimmer than its head. But the neck and head combined was like eight feet long. So it feels oh, like a like Jesus. a Nessie, like a Nessie kind of yes, thing. Yes, it does. Um, and the head was the shape of an eel. They also said that the tail looked like the back of an airplane, which I did look up what an airplane looked like in the 40s and 50s for Great you. Great idea. Because I was like, I don't, maybe I don't know what that looks like. I mean, it looks like a fucking. I think I know what you mean. Like with the. It looks like an older version of a plane, but it's pretty much the same. But right. It has like more of a rounded tip. You know how dildos are. Um, <laughs> oh, I see. I see. So it, it looks like it's a. That That's would be the a tail scary of scary plane. Thing. That plane looks like it's about to crash into the ground. I don't, <laughs> it I don't looks like, like it's look. missing its nose. Like it's I, missing. Yeah, your... it does. It does. I don't like to look at this anymore. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, so now that's I'm what scared the t- of the dildo monster. Apparently, by the way, is what I've <laughs> just learned about myself. And well, I already knew that. <laughs> but so think about this: between the neck and the head, it's eight feet long. That's yeah. much bigger than a fucking robot. That's so, gigantic. And then if the tail looks like the back of an airplane, which in the fifties, I think I don't know how many people actually knew what airplanes looked like, because in my mind, not not everybody had that frame of reference. I imagine so. that that you'd see it in a newspaper, though, and like oh, that's true. I mean, they had like images. Well, because this thing was always in the water, nobody was ever sure of what the full body of this thing looked like. They didn't know if under the surface there were additional limbs or fins that they hadn't Horrifying. seen. And so they never knew how this thing actually moved, which um, comes into play later. So, I mean, to this day, no one knows how an airplane moves, so I don't know if they'll ever figure it out. But I certainly to this day don't know how a snake moves. I don't get it. And I don't, and I don't really want to learn either. to explain it to yeah, us Yeah, nobody either. tell me. I'm to fine be clear, with... It won't make me (laughs) like them more. I'll tell you that. It actually, I'll hate them more. So, 
God, I feel so bad. I ran into someone who was a listener and she was obviously a snake person. And she was, she like, was obviously a snake person. Well, she was like, let me tell. show you a picture of my snake. And I was like, no, have I'm you not, not <laughs> listened to the show? Like, this is not going to work out. People, but it's so funny. I do that too with podcasts where I'm like, I just do selective hearing where I'm like, well, that's not like, I'm just going to like, well, you haven't you seen my snake. That. And I'm like, yeah, I yeah, promise yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I promise you. I promise you. I don't know the difference. It's so funny. And it's I like, love of that course, they still listen, though. They're like, I don't care. I'm still going to I you know that the it. snake person is married to a rat person, and both of them think that I'd fucking <laughs> I love, love their rat snake and person. rat. I love a rat person. Ugh. So, um, okay. They, yeah, so it's, it, it at one point was the size of a rowboat, but as the story's going on, it's getting bigger, right? Like now it's like just at the shoulders right, of eight feet tall. Right now its neck is the size of a rowboat. Um, and the tail's the size of, or not the size, but it looks like the back of an airplane. Right. At this point now, we've got this guy, Norman, who shows up, and he sees it three different times. Okay. Um, he says the first time it was just swimming on the water's surface and he saw it swimming around. The second time he saw it swimming around and he like called his like employees over because he was like, I, this is Somebody the thing I was fucking telling witness. you about. Yeah. Yeah. Someone come look at this with me. Cause I, I don't want to be called crazy in the break room again. Yeah. Rude. And apparently it was swimming and then did the thing where like, you know, when fish like turn around and then they like go back under the water, there's like a little splash. Like a little pl- plop. Yeah. Like a, bloop, like a beautiful man how do we do it here oh, i can't do it okay. you're doing it great i'm impressed thank you um so anyway i think that's what was supposed to be happening with this thing but because the fish was so big it didn't just make a little bloop it actually apparently the water started bubbling foam and the logs that were in the water were tossed like matchsticks so now this thing's like godzilla size it sounds like Jesus, what the fuck is it doing um, and then the third time he saw it, it swam up to the bank and then it immediately went underwater and swam away. So every, again, every single time someone's seeing this, it's just swimming. Like this is like the most fucking stoned out cryptid I've ever like heard benign of. Like he's not cryptid. doing yeah. anything. Yeah. And then they're like, well, well, it's the biggest. Like, okay, congratulations. <laughs> but we get it. Your name's Dildo. Everything. Uh, size matters. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, by the way, I just realized how loud I'm shouting dildo while Allison's on a work call. Um, anyway. Listen, that's her own problem. She saw the notes. She could have asked. <laughs> she should have been like, I need to move a meeting now. Yeah. Um, so around actually, the same time. Just, I'm going to quit. Actually. <laughs> around the same time, a, a group of multiple people saw this thing all at once. And then a cab driver also saw it as it was driving past the water, as he was driving past the water. And by 1950, there are 15 people willing to oh. literally sign affidavits with a magistrate that they saw this thing 15 people that's a lot and well once it was that many people i think the town up until this point was like trying to not make it a thing i mean they were like oh that guy's old oh that guy's like just drunk right. oh Don't this guy blah, blah, blah. oh let's make fun of this guy in the break room and now like when 15 people are like i will literally go to the courthouse right fucking now and sign something that was when people started waking up and they're like oh shit maybe we out have a monster mm-hmm. and especially as the descriptions keep growing and this thing keeps getting bigger and now this fish is over 50 feet long according to the legends 50 feet jesus okay instead of like six feet it's like grown like 10 times its size yeah and uh some people don't know if like oh that's in the game of telephone people are elaborating and it's Mm -hmm. getting crazier or what if it is 50 feet long and it's been growing all these years that's what i'm saying it's 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 growing it was a baby some so some people think it must just be getting bigger, which makes sense because during the first sightings of this monster, the the pond was like full of salmon and trout, and by this time, there's like no more salmon and trout. Like it's and it's so, not because of overfishing. No, <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> I mean, it's a fishing town, and so they were like, uh, "Okay, maybe this thing ate all the fish, and that's why it's <gasps> growing so big." And that's when they started thinking, "What happens if it runs out of food in the water?" My thought would have been. Oh, it dies because it can't eat anymore. But they thought, obviously, it's going to grow legs, climb out of the water, and eat the cattle, and then us. Or it's just like the next time someone's on a fishing boat, it's going to be like, ooh, food. Yeah, like jaws. Yeah. Snatch you. Especially because since nobody knew what the monster's full body looked like, they didn't know if it had legs. It it might already be able to get out of the water. It could just propel itself out. Maybe it has wings. Who the fuck knows? Yeah, so they they were very afraid that the monster was either going to learn how to walk on land or already could and would come after the visitors to the pond. So Jeez. officially in town, as of 1950, children were not allowed to go outside at night unattended and they could never be near the water because, as the article states, 
the townspeople feared that the monster was, quote, ruminating on the digestibility of chubby little Newfoundlanders. Oh my God! <laughs> so like flowery! He's just, he's just looking at you from the water going, that's a fat one. I'm going to oh, do it. God. You know? <laughs> Finally. I'm waiting all day. Now, one theory is that it was a giant squid because in the 1930s, one time a giant squid washed up on shore. Here? Um, in, like there, in this I mean? in this area yeah and so oh, they were wow, like okay. oh well since there's giant squid in the area yeah, maybe this is squid related um 30 years later another squid giant squid washed up on shore and that like almost conf- like they doubled down then they're like okay maybe it's definitely a giant squid so but like one time in the 1930s one time in the 1960s and that was enough to like solidify a theory for some huh. people but how it got there is like such a mystery that mainly people think well, not mainly, but one of the m- major theories is that when it was a little tiny fish, it either came in through uh, like a brook or an inlet from the sea or through mm-hmm. a tunnel. And then it ate all their fucking salmon and trout and got too fat that it can't leave now. So it's stuck oh, in there. No. But the other one that people really get a kick out of, if you recall the very first thing you said when I started telling you about this monster they think that Nielsen is responsible because he was crossbreeding fish eggs. <gasps> oh, right. And he accidentally Dr. Frankensteined a monster. And no. that's why he fucking left town because he realized what he'd done. <gasps> and he's like, ducks, you're on your own. I can't <laughs> duck, stop duck. thinking about this. Fuck, get out of here. Let's... Duck, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm gone. Wow. Um, and so duck, he duck, either... genetically modified dildo <laughs> monster. <laughs> Duck, duck, dildo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, that's good. Duck, duck, dildo. He either, so he either accidentally made this creature, realized what he'd done, and left town before it got too big. Or just in case he did create a monster from his crossbreeding and he like got, he panicked about it. He told locals that he saw something, even though he didn't, to preemptively warn them about oh. what they would see one day in the They're water. Like, that something like, is there. This is your future. Good luck. He's like, he's like, something's there. I'm telling you now. Ew, duck duck dip. i didn't do it <laughs> so we don't know if that even has anything it's just like a fun theory of like oh dr frankenstein's scared of his own monster right 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 you know when you have to figure out a really tough conundrum like oh i really want to have fun and have some drinks have a margarita tonight but also i have to get up early and drive a certain grumpy toad to her music class yeah we've all been there sounds personal yeah um (laughs) no it sounds actually really relatable to everyone okay (laughs) i can't relate but i mean i can relate in different ways instead of cocktail or drive my grumpy toad to school it's more like hmm should i stay up late and play star tenders or should i actually go to bed and maybe feel good about myself tomorrow i don't have to choose anymore i can have both okay it's a world where we can have both because zbiotics pre-alcohol has saved the day their probiotic was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's that byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. We kept hearing about pre-alcohol and wondered what it was actually like. Now that I've tried it, I get why everyone is talking about it. And with their GMO technology, Zbiotics is continuing to invent probiotics that will help with everyday challenges of modern living. Go to zbiotics.com slash drink to learn more and get 15% off your first order when you use drink at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Use the code drink at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode and our good times. Now, so that's the end of it. I do want to say technically, even though this is the dildo pond monster, most of the encounters seem to be in a town actually called Blaketon, which is south of dildo. Blaketon. Blaketon, Blake Town. Um, but they have a population of 250 people, which is not a lot. And then all 15 people willing to sign affidavits were from that town. And the I don't know if you were keeping track, but the witnesses I told you about in the story. Yeah. There were only in total 12 people. So the fact that there were 15 from one town willing to sign an affidavit means that there were are more stories than we're even aware of oh, that have never I been see. documented. Yeah. And it sounds like a majority of them were from Blaketon. So this okay. might actually be the, the Blaketon monster, but, but we don't but know. But the late is the lake called Lake Dildo though? It's Dildo Pond. Yeah. Or Dildo Pond. Okay. Okay. So that's But it's just why. on the southern tip of it where on the other side is Dildo. Right. Okay. 
Gotcha, so, gotcha, gotcha. But it's, I mean, it's still technically the Dildo Monster because it's at Dildo Pond. Right, but right. it wasn't in Dildo City or Dildo I Town proper. Anyway, fun fact, if you're looking at a map, it happened closer to Blake Town, Blaketon, than okay. Dildo. But anyway, that is the Dildo Pond Monster. <sighs> That was an you hour really... and a half. I'm so fucking sorry, but no. It was listen, so worth you told it. me to banter. I don't know what to tell you. Um, wow, that was beautiful, M. I Thank was you. actually like very enraptured by that story. It, um, it was it was a beautiful time uh, for me. It, it was for me as well. Okay, good, 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 great, good. Um, I'm gonna tell you something horrible now. Sorry. <laughs> oh wait, hang on. Let's go back to dildos. <laughs> Can I tell you actually one fun thing real quick before we get into like the really sad stuff which is what i forgot to mention earlier and i'm so mad because i wanted to make sure i mentioned this in the uh when we talked about halloween but blaze did the potato experiment like the social experiment where you put a potato out and have you seen this no oh okay so okay you put you offer kids either a potato or piece of candy and this guy did some as a joke almost a few years ago and it turned out like i swear like nine out of ten kids took a potato every time and it's because they were like the weird kids and they're like i want the freaky weird random it's like thing. every kid picked it it was like oh if you huh. offer this choice like kids will pick the potato and so blaze like bought potatoes and i was like "Ugh, but you're trick-or-treating with leona like i don't want to explain to people why there's potatoes in here we gave out like i mean dozens of, pota- we of, potatoes. of potatoes we ran out of potatoes <laughs> yeah we ran out of multiple bags we ran out of potatoes before candy it was honestly strange I don't know how a kid thinks, but I know if someone handed me candy or a potato, I would also take the potato, but I would do it because I'd be like, the candy one I was expecting, if you're giving me a potato, there must be a reason I'm unaware of. Well, and I think so I that's would feel kind like, of it. It's is like, that what it whoa, is? this is cool. Like, Well, no, I wouldn't do it because it was cool. I would be like, oh, I'm, a, I'm not looped in and you clearly oh. know something I don't know. I don't think I mean, kids are thinking that intense about it, I think but the kids I would who panic. thought that were like, I'm going to take Skittles <laughs> and walk away. Like <laughs> yeah, we, didn't, would... we didn't say you have to pick one now. It was like, they're just in there. Um, no, yeah, I think the... if someone handed me the more random one, I would just be like, I obviously know less than you. I'm like, just going to sure, follow gonna your walk away. Yeah. Go with your flow. And I, uh, well, we didn't hand them out. We just like put them and if people happen to see them in there, they could take them. But this one girl, we put like it, the most effective was putting one potato in the middle of all the candy. And then, this girl walked up and went oh, a potato and she grabbed it and all her friends mm. were like i wanted the potato and she was like finally we found a house with a potato and i was like wow okay this is... and they were teenage girls and then they all started bickering and they were like you always literally you were just walking ahead of us blah, blah. and so then the girl at the end was like all right fine and they walked away and i was like Psst, come here and i like handed Good her for a potato <laughs> and she's like ha ha now i have my own potato and i, I wonder thought, if police was onto something here is it like like the because we all have experienced this that like when you're a teenager like everything's so random is it that i think it's it that that's what i meant more like that you're like unexpected it's like unexpected i think mm. I, I think and i don't think there's like much it's just like cool that's different hmm I don't know. I like, I mean, I cannot tell you. There were parents being like, why? And I was like, I don't know. I didn't do this. I would not have put potatoes in here. But the kids seem to love it. You know, it's interesting. Well, first of all, no, when I hear potato experiment, I'm apparently ancient and thought you meant like making a potato a clock. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, a battery. Yeah, I've done that for sure. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, Allison, uh, I brought, I got like all like the chocolate and all the things that I would think a, a kid really, really wants. And then Allison got, um, a bag of fruit snacks mm. and i was like nobody's gonna pick the fruit snacks because in my mind i was like i'm not gonna fucking pick fruit snacks if there's like a bunch of sugar in a in a bag for mm-hmm. me um and then that was the one that got the most comments was the fruit snacks and it was it was mainly like little kids who are clearly still being fed by their parents it's like yeah obviously the parents are giving them fruit snacks but there were so many like three-year-olds who went oh <gasps> welch's fruit snacks i love what we were like holy shit okay here have two next time, <laughs> next time buy the spidey ones that'll be those will be a hit oh i thought of leona there was a spider gwen so oh sp- that's yeah. cute leona was anyway. like to she wore to the music class today they were like wear costumes she's worn that grumpy toad like four days in a row so we Good just put her. her we put her in the ghost out, uh spider outfit and they were like we like your costume she goes it's not a costume and i was like okay she's ghost spider it's not a costume anytime i see anything spider even spider man i'm just like oh there's leona like she I, loves like, it she's she totally with it 
messed with my head. Yeah, um, she really mine too. By the way, man, that potato thing. Well, it, if Allison catches wind of that, we're gonna have a bag of potatoes outside. I tell you what, and Blaze was like, honestly, they're cheaper than candy, and I was like, oh, well, please don't say that, Allison. I, Allison, as everyone else, stop listening real quick. Allison, we're not, we're not doing this. I mean, just, we can do it, but we also have to just get candy. Start saying dildo again, it that'll get her off. Your dildo. Case. Okay, not singing. Wait, what's now. the actual dildo song? Innocent children. <laughs> um, Innocent children. <laughs> they want potatoes. Okay. <laughs> I am so sorry. I wanted to get that out of my system before I forgot because I knew. I know Blaze wants me to give the credit that yes, he was right. I guess kids want potatoes. I don't know. So good, good job, Blaze. Blaze. You knew what the kids would want. Um. Anyway, I'm gonna tell a terrible story now oh. episode 405 we're covering the kidnapping of jacob wetterling this is one of the first true crime stories i ever like really got immersed in because when we started the podcast or it's actually before we started the podcast when i first started listening to podcasts there was um a podcast called in the dark and mm. season one was all about jacob wetterling and i remember being at my temp job and like just being like gripped by the story um and so i'm finally covering it now which is kind of kind of full circle uh for like the you know one every 20 times i do recognize the name but so i, I oh, might okay. know this story i might know it but i have no i have no actually let's find out we'll find out so in january of 1989 12 year old Jared Shirel. I've been trying to say this name so many times. Poor M is just like trying to root me on over there. Shirel. I, I think I'm saying that right. I hope survived an unimaginable ordeal when a stranger abducted him on his way home in Cold Spring, Minnesota. So Jared had been ice skating with friends when a man approached him in a vehicle asking for directions. When Jared got close enough, the man forced Jared into his car, drove him to a remote location and raped him. Oh, my God. He then said to Jared, run. <gasps> if you look back, I'll shoot. How old is he? 12. 12. Oh, my God. Yeah. So Jared, of course, ran for his life. Detectives collected and examined his clothes for evidence and the community awaited answers being thinking like, well, this was so just out in the open and brutal. Like, I'm sure we'll find him, you know, um, and their other thought was we got to keep our kids safe if there's some lunatic running around. Yeah. But time just passed and the man who kidnapped Jared was never identified and they tried to move on with their lives. So we fast forward uh, to the near the end of the year, October of 1989. This is the same year, but just a few months later. This is St. Joseph, Minnesota, and this is about 15 minutes away from Cold Spring where Jared had been abducted. So we fast forward 10 months. We're now about 15 miles away. I think 15 minutes, 15 miles. I'm not sure. Um, in St. Joseph, Minnesota. And we've got 11 year old Jacob Wetterling. Now he is living out a very just like standard, almost idyllic, even childhood. Um, just very happy, very uh, candy and potatoes, candy and potatoes, just everything you need. And this town itself has fewer than 4,000 residents and is surrounded by farmland. So it's like kind of a rural and like wholesome town. It sounds a little bit like Dildo. It <laughs> sure does. Like, where all the really innocent small... children are, you know? So. Right. Where all the innocent children are. And they're just playing outside. And I mean, it's the 80s. Like kids are just riding their bikes around. It is a very family friendly town. Jacob's parents, Patty and Jerry Wetterling, purchased a home in the woods of St. Joseph where they were raising Jacob and his siblings. So Jacob was 11. He had one older sister named Amy, who was 13. He had a 10-year-old brother named Trevor and an 8-year-old sister named Carmen. So he's second in four kids. Mm -hmm. Jerry, his dad, was a familiar face in town um, because he was a chiropractor and he had a billboard with his face on it. So... I imagine I get as the it. kids, yeah, you, I know. And I imagine as the kids, you'd be like, that's my dad, you know, like so I got, excited. You know, I love a billboard. It, I'm, the day that there's a billboard with my face on it, oh my God, game <laughs> over. I got to be honest. You're going to drive your kids out of the way to school just to show them the billboard every single morning. I almost want to call my hometown because I know it would be cheaper than LA and I'd be like, right, yeah. how much f to slap my face on this puppy for like 30 days? What do you we'll think? We'll figure out like where your high school bully lives and then like put it kind of right on their way to work. <laughs> I would love that. I also like, uh, to be clear, it wouldn't even be like to promote anything. It's just for the plot. Like it's just so I oh, could yeah. say like, Later. Well, certainly this is not marketing this is a separate thing this is a personal issue if i if there's if ever a billboard needs something in fredericksburg virginia 
I got an idea what we're going to do with it. You know what I'm I saying? think we've got someone on the horn that I can call <laughs> named M. Schultz. <laughs> you know, anytime there's a blank Actually, spot. Actually, I bet just... you Linda already has has her finger in this like plans, somehow. yeah yeah I, I feel like she's already got something room percolating up there in her little brain uh, uh percolating a great great word great word thank you um so anyway his dad is the local chiropractor and because he has um his face on this billboard of course people know who he is know who the family is and patty meanwhile w- worked as, as a stay-at-home mom she would manage the family's hectic schedule especially with four kids And this was a very busy household. They all had different extracurriculars and sports and hobbies. Some of them even made home videos as like a hobby, which is basically what I was doing instead of sports. Um, Some were horseback riding. So it's kind of that classic situation of like shuttling the kids from one thing to the next and trying to balance everyone's (laughs) schedules. So Patty and Jerry were always at rehearsals, performances, games. Like this was a nonstop schedule for the family. And they encouraged their family, their children to try new things, pursue their passions, try making home videos, try horse riding. Jacob's best friend, Aaron Larson, said in an interview, they were kind of the family that was willing to try everything and anything. Mm -hmm. So the Wetterling children were very confident, very adventurous, and they were also very tight knit. They were really close and they were actually all friends, which is kind of sweet. So Jacob didn't really mind when his parents asked him to babysit his two younger siblings on October 22nd, 1989. So Patty and Jerry were going to a dinner party about 20 minutes from their house, and 13-year-old Amy was going out for with friends for the evening. So Jacob said, sure, I'll stay home with younger siblings Trevor and Carmen. And mm-hmm. then his friend Aaron, who I just quoted earlier, came to hang out as well. Sure. This is where my heart starts to hurt quite a bit because it's so, I think you and I and a lot of our listeners can kind of relate to this um, next part being such an innocent part of childhood. But just before it got dark, Jacob called, which is also very sweet, called the landline where his parents were eating dinner, you know, at the dinner party. Yes. I was like, can I talk to my mom? Like, hi, Mrs. So-and-so. Can I talk to my mom? (laughs) And uh, when they got on the phone, he said, can we take our bikes to the movie rental store down the road? I don't know if it was a blockbuster, Hollywood video, who knows, but basically said, can we ride our bikes to rent a movie? Please, 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 please. Yeah. And, um, you know, this is about, and Carmen, the sister didn't want to go. It was just the the boys that wanted to go. And so Aaron said, can we, can we call the neighbor Rochelle? Her name is Rochelle Curtis. Can we call her to babysit Carmen at home? And then I'll go with my friend and my brother to the video store. And this is where I just imagine this tore the parents apart because Patty said, sure, as long as you agree to wear a reflective vest, bring a flashlight. Like even in the eighties, she was like, you have to be so careful you know, but it's a five minute bike ride. So even at the, for the time she was being like extra cautious. Um, and, and the, the, the fact that her fear was getting hit by a car and not like abduction, of course, because why would you think that is your first fear in a small town? But like the fact that she was prepping him for like potential road accidents, not thinking like, oh, there's something much worse out there, mm-hmm. you know? So the three of them set out for the store. It was Jacob and Trevor on their bikes and Aaron was on a scooter and that kind of slowed them down a bit. But the the boys on the bikes didn't mind. I would I would be pissed if I wanted to just go ride my bikes and then a fucking scooter kid came with me. And I'm like, oh, like we can't. uh, We just have to. That's the best friend. And he didn't bring his bike. So it's like, well, he has to borrow something. I know, but that's when you uh, offer like some rope and you're like, you stand on the scooter. I'm going to actually bike and I'm get us there. I'm surprised they didn't make the little brother give the bike to the to the friend. Actually, honestly. that's a great point. Yeah. But like that goes to show apparently they were all just very sweet kids. I know. I, I, I'm such an asshole. Like I'd be like, couldn't be if me. you can't keep up, you just can't come. I don't know what you to tell you. You can't come anymore. <laughs> you would just like push him over. Oh, God. I'm scared of you. Okay. So the three of them set out on the uh, to the store. And remember, they're also like 10 and 11. Like, they're really little. Um, and so they have their bikes. It's like, I, I mean, literally a five-minute ride on your bike. Mm-hmm. And so they get there. It's a cloudy night. There's no moon or stars. So it's pretty dark, but they have this flashlight. And although it was Sunday, there was no school the next day. So they were really excited. They got to the video store. Remember those days where you're like, oh, you have a day off tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be a school day. And then your parent, your parents let you have a friend over and rent a movie. I oh, mean, it's just all heaven. so 
familiar. Yeah, and and so nostalgic. I still chase that high. I'll never get it I again. I know. But. <laughs> I know. It feels like like some pinnacle of youth, you know. So they get to the store. Um, important note: they rented a VHS copy of The Naked Gun. Um, I don't know if you ever saw that film. Um, very fun, very classic. Um, I they know. left with. They also got candy, of course. I'm sure they bought a lot of candy. And the neighbor, by the way, I love that this is like several days before Halloween. So it's like, they're like, we get candy now too. I don't know. I know. There's something like, just we're, about we're, there we're stockpiling. Getting, stockpiling. We're prepping. <laughs> yeah. Because think of all the potatoes that are coming our way in a second. Oh so. my God, you're right. The yeah. starches are coming in. We got to get some sugar in us. Um, so they got a bunch of candy. They got this VHS copy of this movie and uh, decided to head back home. So meanwhile, we cut back to the house and Rochelle, the neighbor who was babysitting, was just kind of sitting with Carmen, having like a fine time babysitting her. And suddenly Trevor and Aaron, so Trevor is the little brother and Aaron's Mm -hmm. the best friend, burst in the front door screaming that someone took Jacob. (gasps) Oh, my God. And they said on the way home, I mean, they're frantic. They say on the way home, a man with a gun attacked them and took Jacob away. So Rochelle, who's also presumably a teenager, like a Yeah, she's probably like, I mean, the John Mulaney bit of like, you're a horse, like taking care of another horse. Like, right, exactly. (laughs) Like you're a child watching children. This doesn't seem right. Yeah, exactly. Certainly this poor girl has her own trauma now having to handle this. And she's like, what, 12 or something? What's she going to be prepared for this? I don't think so. Yeah. So basically they they barge in. She's like, listen, I'm going to call my dad. And thankfully he was home next door. So she calls her dad. He rushes over. He calls 911. On the call, apparently he stayed extremely calm okay. and that was able to help Aaron and Trevor like answer questions because yeah. they were so frantic that the da- which I just find that to be a nice little side note that the dad was like, let's just all get through it. Yeah. keep it down here and we'll get the details out. And so they they tell the details to dispatch. And, you know, at first responding officers were like, well, what? Like, usually we get calls about like a raccoon breaking into yeah, they're someone's like, yard this is you know somehow not our forte yeah this feels but they also didn't really believe it at first they were like oh this must be like a misunderstanding that happened because like why would yeah. there be an abduction in this small town right and also and, it's like the week before halloween maybe it's like a mischief night thing where they're like yeah prank calling like, and, they're, or and they're like preteen boys like who knows maybe one of them pranked the other one. who knows exactly so the responding officers were like well i don't know if this is a genuine child abduction in saint joseph but they responded quickly um and meanwhile patty and jerry of course rushed home from the dinner party unsure of what was going to wait be yeah. waiting for them at the house which I is can't just imagine another, that car ride. another 20 minute nightmare of a car ride um and it just was hard for anyone to really grasp that someone took jacob like it just i, I assume it's one of those sentences like that doesn't really you know hit and also like why like, him like what like, took him where like yeah exactly who you know it just must be so perplexing so they get back and trevor describes the scene to the police this is the younger brother The boys were just three minutes away from home, Mm. and as they passed a long gravel driveway on the left, which led to a neighbor's farm, a man in a mask leapt out in front of them. He said he had a gun, and he ordered all three boys to put their bikes and scooter in a ditch and lie face down on the ground. Oh, my God. And Aaron, the friend, like, laughed almost startled i would think it was like a prank or something yeah Yeah, he thought it was a prank especially so close to halloween and also like halloween and close to home and also maybe like that's like just like his fight or flight is just like oh ha 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 like being in denial that that could really even fucking happen fawning like yeah what very funny (laughs) and so he laughs and he thinks this is a joke but the man pulls out a gun and proves he's completely serious so the boys obey his command. They get down on the ground. Um, he asks how old they are, and Aaron and Jacob say 11. Trevor says 10. So he tells Aaron and Trevor to get up and run. Which, like, then you're like, so did the age have anything to do with it? Because if if he said 11 and now you want the 11-year-old, why'd you let the other 11-year-old go? Like, Or did he just want one of the older ones I or think something? he just wanted to know how old they were and then, like, took his pick or, or you know. It's so just, disgusting. Yeah, it's absolutely horrific. So he told Aaron and Trevor to get up and run, and they began running, of course, as fast as they could. He told them, guess what? If you turn around, I'll shoot you. So they take off, and the last thing they witnessed was the man grabbing Jacob. Oh, my God. 
So the sheriff is confident that they can quickly figure this out. They were thinking maybe he got tied to a tree somewhere. I mean, when this happened like 10 months earlier, they they hadn't connected the cases. But even in that first case, he let his victim go. You know, remember right. that Jared got to run away. So they're thinking, well, maybe he's somewhere in the woods. Um, the interstate is nearby. Like, Let's go do a search of the town. So they go do a search, um, but they're thinking in the back of their minds, you know, with the interstate right there, if yeah, he easy took get him away. into his car, yeah, he could have gotten anywhere. So they focus on the local area. Firefighters and dozens of officers search the area until 3 a.m. The search is called off and it resumes at sunrise. But days go by with no sign of Jacob. And at that point, the FBI become involved and the governor of Minnesota orders a massive search. He also deployed the National Guard, which searched 30 miles of ground on foot. And they also scoured the woods and farmland of St. Joseph on horseback and in helicopters. Mm -hmm. Even private pilots volunteered time in their planes and volunteers put up thousands of posters requesting information on his whereabouts, along with white ribbons that said Jacob's Hope. And Patty and Jerry did as many as eight interviews a day because they were just trying to keep his story, you know, on the news and relevant and on people's minds. And meanwhile, the Minnesota Vikings football team acknowledged Jacob at a game with posters and announcements praying for his safe return and trying to get the word out. So they were really doing everything they could to figure this out. Wow. Soon, Jacob Wetterling became a household name throughout the country. That might even be why you recognize it. Like if Maybe. people had just discussed it over the years, you know. It was only a few years before we got here. So I'm sure my mother was exactly. always was using say, it in her mind. I'm sure your mother was familiar, you know, yeah. with the case. So he became kind of a household name throughout the country. Um, nobody knew. It was like he had just been taken and vanished, you know, off the face of the earth. And there were, were no clear answers. So, of course, everybody started kind of playing who done it and pointing dif- to different people of interest. So Jerry himself, the dad, had to stop speaking during interviews because the public was like he doesn't seem sad enough. You know, they're like oh, watching fuck it. Me with that. What are you talking about? I know. About? And they're like watching it and saying and so he starts getting harassed by people saying like, "Oh yeah, like maybe you you took your own son and killed him," you know. And so he had to pu- like just bow out of the interviews. Um, but people approved of the way Patty sometimes cried during the interviews. So oh, they I'm found so glad that they approve how I know. she's handling <laughs> I know, it. Right? Thank you so much. That's really thoughtful of you. So meanwhile, detectives revisited the scene of the crime where the kids said that this man jumped out and grabbed Jacob. And the farm at the end of the driveway where Jacob was kidnapped actually belonged to this guy named Dan Rassier. Now, Dan was an elementary school band instructor, and he lived on this family farm with his parents. And he was home uh, that night, but he said he was home alone when his dog alerted him to a blue vehicle, which had rushed into his driveway, spun around and left. And Mm. Dan just kind of glanced out and thought, okay, I guess they were taking a wrong turn and had to had to turn around. But he woke up later that night when his dog alerted him again, this time because police were searching the property for Jacob in the hours after the abduction. Mm. So Dan, of course, told investigators about the blue vehicle and he said he wished he had had more, but he just assumed the guy was turning around. So he didn't look very closely. Yeah. Um, And what he didn't realize at this point is that he was actually a person of interest in the case and that (sighs) he would remain a person of interest for many, many years. Like it would honestly kind of ruin his life. So more than 10 years went by with no new leads to Jacob. And meanwhile, Dan is still on the hook and investigators call him in for questioning again. And one of them later admits in an interview that they were maybe more aggressive than usual, trying to intimidate Dan into a confession. Yeah. Well, and by the way, like we absolutely know he had nothing to do with it. So it's just t- hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah. But they said they needed the confession because they had no evidence. And it's like, well, forcing it out of somebody who didn't do it, yeah. you know, whatever. So they repeatedly tell Dan that they knew he abducted and murdered Jacob, but t- poor Dan, the band teacher, is like, I swear to God, I had nothing to do with I'm it. I'm literally I'm a band teacher. Like, please I'm literally just... like, let me go back to work. <laughs> so detectives convince Patty there is compelling reason to believe Dan, the band teacher, took Jacob. So Patty said, fine, I'll agree to whatever you think I should do. So they basically wired her up put a mic on her and staged an accidental encounter between her and Dan in a public place. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, so they basically put her on the spot and say, hey, go talk to him. Get as much information as you can. And she's just desperate to find her son. So she's like, okay, fine. Did it accidentally, like, frame him or something? Or... No, not even him. Oh. So, yeah, so basically she runs into him by accident. And she says, hey, can I just ask you some questions about whatever you saw that night? And he's, you know, he's very sensitive about this he says sure i'll sit down with you he sits with her for 45 minutes oh wow he answers every single question she has he tells her i only feel that if i would have been more alert maybe i could have stopped it i could have saved him like he's just beating himself up for not having this information to the point that when patty left the conversation she said that man's innocent he did not do this yeah or he's such a sociopathic liar that like had me fools yeah has me fools but but she said i do not think this is your guy it wasn't until 21 years later when he's, yes, yeah, still a person of interest that they finally got a search warrant for his farm. And in 2010, the investigative team used backhoes to break ground on the property where they found nothing. But instead of exonerating him, now the public was just aware that Dan was a person of interest and they were digging up his farm. And Many people just started to spread this rumor that he kidnapped and probably murdered Jacob Wetterling. And by the way, they just tore up his farm and then left. Of um, course. And then if you think about it, like he's a band teacher of kids and all these people are whispering in town that oh, it's he murdered ruined. this it's child. Over. It's right? Over. Like it's the worst possible thing to have happen, you know, when you're when you're trying to teach kids a and all of a sudden. False they're allegation like, oh, are about you a, a kid when you work yeah. with kids, like sign our yes. career. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. So he tried to salvage his life and reputation, but like it just he was in a bad, a bad, bad space for a while there. Mm -hmm. So for years, meanwhile, Patty wrote letters to Jacob just in some hope that maybe he would come back. And when he did come back, she would have like years of letters of just what had been going on with the family, updating him on everything they were doing to try and find him. Um, she just wanted him to know if he ever came back that they did everything they could and you know, even though it took so long to find him. Patty and Jerry also dedicated themselves to activism and advocacy work. Um, they wanted, obviously, to prevent this from happening to other families and support families in similar circumstances. So they founded Jacob Wetterling Resource Center, which is a zero abuse project program that works to prevent crimes against children while connecting families of the missing and exploited to important resources. Wow. So over the years, it just kind of seemed to be like just a cold dead case yeah. um it looked very hopeless but thankfully because of advancements in technology in 2012 dna analysis was actually able to identify unknown dna on the clothes of jared shire who i mentioned earlier who had been kidnapped in 1989 um and had been raped and then let go to run run back mm -hmm. uh, and that was in cold spring minnesota so, of course, I remember, I, I mean, I'd mentioned Jared's case in relation to Jacob's case. So years earlier, investigators had made the connection between these two cases, um, you know, the age of the boys, the proximity. And so Jared, now being much older, obviously pushed them to reopen the investigation and pursue new leads. He oh, very much good. like advocated for himself, which is awesome. That's awesome. In 2014, investigators opened a cold case review and carefully revisited every detail of Jacob's and Jared's abductions and hoped they could find some sort of information that would maybe break either or both of the cases. So pretty soon they honed in on a sus suspect named Daniel Heinrich, whose name appeared in connection to other cases hmm, nearby so mm -hmm. that, that involved children, by the way. He was suspected in the January 1989 kidnapping and rape of 12-year-old Jared, as well as multiple assaults on boys in another nearby town called Painesville. For years, reports were filed with police about a man who pushed boys off of their bikes and physically and sexually assaulted them oh, just shit. as they were driving around. And in an interview, men who grew up in the area recalled that it became common knowledge to them that preteen boys like needed to be super careful and couldn't couldn't just be out there like Fuck. by themselves without a support group or without people looking out for each other. Like he was like so creepy and dangerous in public that everyone just like knew him by name of like don't go near this guy. No, they didn't know who it was. Oh right. Um, they just were like, oh there's someone out there's there. A, there's a predator out here. Exactly. And he was preying on How basically preteen boys. Come up during Jared's things because it was a different location. 
Um, no, so it did. Uh, this this is in the years following. So after oh, okay. after Jacob or after Jared's um, abduction and rape, um, over the years there had been several reports of some guy running gotcha. around like okay. assaulting kids, and so. I thought it was before um, him. Sorry. I was like, why did no, no one ever I mean, mention that before? Well, he might have been before him, but they don't know who he is. So it's like they tried everything they could to find out who this predator was. But yeah, the they best they could do is just say, there's a creepy guy. Look out. There's this predator guy. Yeah. So Jared's attacker, the man who assaulted the boys in Painesville and Jacob's kidnapper all had one thing in common. So this is where they're kind of putting the pieces together. And that is that witnesses and survivors described him as having an unusually gruff, gravelly voice. Huh. And okay. so they were like, this has got to be the same guy. But for decades, investigators had no evidence linking this Daniel creep to any of the cases, even though like he was also known to be this creep. They don't have any proof. And tire tracks and shoe prints at the scene of Jacob's abduction did match shoes and tires belonging to Daniel. Um, and fibers from a car set collected from Jared's jacket matched the interior of Daniel's car. So we're getting closer and closer. Yeah, I hope the cops are at least thinking, OK, we're on to something versus like, oh, that's weird. Oh, that's weird. Like, I want to know no, when it no. started they, layering. They definitely know. Um, and the car was also blue, which matched. Oh, OK the one Dan saw in his driveway right before Jacob vanished, but without any unique markings, like saying like a blue car, mm -hmm. it's not going to get you anywhere in court, you know? Um, and there were no, like, there wasn't even something where they could say, Oh, he said there was a bumper sticker or a dent on the car that matched. Like it was just the right. fact that it was blue. Um, and all they could say really was that the suspect's car. So they had their eyes on this guy, but all they could say is that the car and shoes might be the same type of car and shoes, but, that's about it. It was also not evidence that Daniel's car or shoes were at any of the scenes of the crimes. Like they couldn't even prove because they hadn't found any evidence of Daniel actually being there. They couldn't prove like, what if he, someone used his car? What mm -hmm. if someone wore his shoes? So they were just kind of in a rough spot. But the real breakthrough that occurred was one single hair that think god they had preserved not knowing about the future of dna evidence right this isn't that is, fucking crazy isn't that crazy i mean i guess in 89 you may have known that it was something's on the horizon an up yes exactly like an up-and-coming thing i'm just really thankful they were thorough enough to save one hair you know what, what do you think is like the th the next thing that like i, I think about it all we're just all abandoning at crime scenes when we should be getting a big fucking scoop of it like what if it's my, just like the air you know well, so just that's like, what i get that's my guess is that we leave some sort of trace that we just can't like energy part of our trace. aura yeah yeah I, I really do think that there's something to that like when you walk into a room and people have just been arguing and you're like whoa it's tense in here like the air is, feels weird i just feel like there's got to be something like that i mean i don't know maybe i'm just i feel like if i were a cop i would and like or a detective or whatever I would absolutely be known as like the fucking nutty one who's like grabbing way too many things from the crime scene. And I'm like, you just never know, you know? Like, yeah. This is like some character on um, bones or something where or you're like, no, or, uh, trust me. <laughs> uh, what was it? What was NCIS. the guy? No, who was the one with OCD? Monk. Monk. I feel Adrian like Monk, my favorite show of all time. I feel yes. like, I feel like it would be something from Monk of like, Oh, this, this is the way that you, your cahoots show themselves, you know, your cahoots. Yeah, just collecting a bunch of weird stuff out of crime scene. Oh, what's a cahoot? Like being in cahoots with something like a... Oh, oh, this is how I'm going to know your... I got you. I thought you meant those were your cahoots. Hmm. You mean that? Was... Yeah, okay, I get it now. I get it now. I'm going to pitch this to ABC. It sounds like it could be a good series. So anyway, this is the hair. They found this one single hair, decades old, still gathering dust somewhere and they're able to run dna analysis on it and guess what it belongs to fucking daniel heinrich it also matches the dna collected from jared's snowsuit which would have been after the it. rape yeah so empowered by this new evidence that daniel had contact with jacob and jared on the day of both abductions detectives obtained a search warrant for daniel's house finally in annandale minnesota of course, Daniel insisted that he never touched anyone, but he did say, hey, when you search my house, you're going to find some, quote, damning stuff. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. well, I mean, to be fair, if anyone looked at our stuff, they would also see that. So. They'd say something, maybe not damning, but definitely concerning. <laughs> I'd say there will be things that um, a, 
the the prosecutor might uh use <laughs> yeah like, there could be a lot um, of skulls some evidence of, of character flaws maybe certainly they will try to defame me and they will have every right to do that um, they will do it correctly and it will not be slander because it will be true but <laughs> also there are wooden dildos galore and i would advise you not to touch them they might give you a splinter um, Same. We do have a lot of dildo gifts that people have given us. Wooden dildos, glass dildos. I did think about whipping out uh, one of our wooden dildos for today's episode. but I almost thought about going downstairs and getting the glass one, but I'm t- it's not going to happen. <laughs> um, anyway, so they, they, as much as we might say, hey, don't look through our stuff, um, he had real reason to actually worry when the police looked at his stuff. They discovered... A plethora of child sexual abuse material, children's clothing that he had collected. He, they found VHS tapes featuring hours of children playing at playgrounds and just like running around town that he would film himself. And with too little evidence to charge Daniel with Jacob's actual abduction because they didn't even know where Jacob was, the investigators offered a plea deal instead, which became very controversial. They basically told Daniel, if you could tell us what happened to Jacob and provide evidence that it's true... You can plead guilty to one child sexual abuse material charge in federal court, and that would be a maximum 20 year sentence. Mm. And so it was kind of like we're trading kind of some justice for information on where Jacob, what happened to Jacob. Right. So it's, you know, it's kind of controversial, but I don't know that there was ever a right answer. Um, It was the way the only way that investigators believed they could ever actually figure out what had happened to Jacob. So Daniel accepted the deal and led investigators to a wooded lot at a farm where they dug up and discovered Jacob's remains. Mm. Daniel told investigators that he had dragged Jacob to his car by gunpoint where he handcuffed him and Jacob asked, what did I do wrong? Oh my God. Just heartbreaking. It just hurts so much. It hurts. Daniel drove Jacob to a rural location just as he had done to Jared and he then raped him. He was more nervous than usual, and he saw red lights on the road that he thought might be police lights, so he panicked, and he shot Jacob twice. Yeah. Daniel went home for a while, uh, then he returned to bury Jacob, and a year later... He he just left him there? Yep. That's insane. I mean, mean, all those, obviously, but, like, you would think if you're that panicked, you would go, you would hide the evidence immediately, not, like, go home and take a fucking nap. Well, I think he wanted to get out of the... He was like, oh, I've I done see. something. I fucked up. I'm going to peace out for a bit, figure out what to do. I don't know. I mean, I don't Re-group. know what this fucking lunatic's thought process is. But either way, he probably had to, he probably didn't plan to kill him and had to go get a fucking shovel, right. you know? I don't You're know. Right. But either way, um, he returned to bury Jacob. And a year later, when he, yuck, revisited the burial site, he noticed that Jacob's red jacket was poking out of the soil. So he relocated Jacob to a different burial site in the woods, and he remained there for over 20 years, just wow. undetected. And the parents just got no closure. The siblings got no closure. His friends got no closure. For decades. That babysitter got no closure. I mean, like, and then think about Jared, who was, yes, who got away. And it's like, how come I, I'm sure that's a, a whole conundrum of like, how come I survived and he didn't? It's like to and... feel for that kid, but also be like, shit, that could have happened to me. Could have you know, to me. It, yeah. Yeah. So when Jerry and Patty, speaking of the parents, received the news that Jacob's remains had been found, Patty said that through the pain, she felt a sort of peace, like you mentioned, kind of a closure, knowing that at least Jacob was at rest and they had kind of solved the mystery. Um, Jerry said the experience was beyond words um, and it was. <laughs> This makes me cry a little bit. Uh, that it was calling their other children, his his siblings, on the phone. That was the hardest part to tell them that yeah, I can't their brother was dead after all this time. So Daniel firmly denied being involved in any of the harassment and assault reports that had been going around uh, by a lot of children. Um, he did, however, confess to kidnapping and raping Jared in January of 1989. I think that was a given because his yeah. DNA was on the snowsuit that he was wearing. But so he, was only, he was only like fessing up because he got busted, not because exactly. he like, exactly. had exactly. like decided like, oh, how about I throw you a bone? And Oh, and guess why else he was only confessing? Because the statute of limitations was up, so he couldn't even get in trouble for it. So he's like, whatever, I guess I'll confess okay, to now, that too. Okay, now again, thinking about the trauma of Jared, of like, Just oh, sick. great. Yes. So, so now he just doesn't have to gonna, do anything about it. 
No, 100%. We're actually getting into Jared now because okay. it's funny you mentioned that because he, if not funny, but it's like, it's very relevant that you mentioned that because basically my next bullet here is for years, Jared had endured, like we said, trauma and nightmares. Um, and he often felt as though the authorities weren't really taking his case seriously. Um, for when good he reason. was a child, for, for, oh, that he felt that way for good reason. Yeah. 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 When he was a child, for example, officers interviewed him without his parents, which, should not have happened especially after he was raped and they made him feel as though they didn't like believe him like they were almost like quizzing him on the details that kind of thing so jared actually dedicated countless hours to advocate advocating for himself other survivors and that of course played a major role in in reopening jacob's case in 2014 which is Mm -hmm. great so he was able to like push for that to finally be solved on behalf of jacob So at a press conference, Patty, who had become very close with Jared, which makes me really happy because he's the same age, you know, as her son would be. And he suffered through the same ordeal. So it's kind of at least they have each other in some way. Um, They've gotten very close. And at a press conference, she thanked Jared and said, quote, Jared had the courage to stand up and say, this happened to me. So in 2018, Jared actually won a lawsuit against Daniel. Uh, the court awarded Jared $17 million, uh, but of course, Daniel Heinrich cannot pay that because he doesn't have $17 million. So it was more of a symbolic thing. Um, the lawsuit was more about giving Jared his chance to actually get up in court and have the legal system acknowledge that that was his right, his uh, victimizer, you know, that he was a victim and that Daniel should be behind bars. And so, you know what? Good for him. Um, Good for him. He, went through all that i imagine that was a lot of like reopening wounds um and also at that point like the statute of limitations is up and everything so it's like how take the closure where you can get it you know yes like what else like if this is the last the only option like absolutely you know yeah and so he was able to face him in court and the justice system was able to say uh yep what happened to you matters you are owed 17 million dollars not that that would ever you know pay off any trauma but like at least we recognize that that you were wronged and deserve justice. So it was, you know, symbolic closure in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, meanwhile, poor Dan, by the way, interestingly that, or interesting that Daniel ended up being the actual, um, yeah, perp, but then Dan was the guy that they were harassing for years. Mm-hmm. So Dan, the band teacher sought damages from the state for defamation, but, um, he lost that lawsuit, unfortunately, even though he had, proven that he had endured six years of public shame from the time investigators named him a person of interest in 2010 to Daniel's confession. All those six years he was going through people, you know, saying, oh, you're a murderer, you're a rapist. I mean, I can't even imagine to be around. And also like when to be innocent in that situation and to have like people like probably like trying to get into your house or say like, I can't believe you hurt kids or not feeling safe Talk to like, even go grocery shopping. Car. Imagine like, I know, fuck that's, me. that's the house you'd egg. I mean, I, not you. I, I mean, and then part of teenagers. you is like, I just want to leave, but I don't know if he was even allowed to leave town. So he just had to sit and, and he's, endure well, that. And he's living on his family's property. So it's right. like, Oh, right. And if you're, yeah, maybe he was advised not to leave town. That's a good point. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. So that was kind of sad. And he didn't, um, the appeal, his lawsuit was dismissed. The appeal was denied. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. I hope he was able to find some sort of, you know, peace yeah. and to what, at the peace he deserves. So meanwhile, Jacob's legacy lives on in the advocacy work that's been done in his name and in the memory of him as a force for good. After Jacob's killer confessed to the crime, Patty spoke publicly once again. She said, Jacob has taught us all how to live, how to love, how to be fair, how to be kind. He speaks to the world that he knew that we believe is a world worth fighting for. Jacob. I'm so sorry. And Mm. that was her, that was her, um, that was her, her, her statement. And, um, his, his mom actually did an interview at one point as as well. And remembered that the day before he was kidnapped, he was in uh, a bad mood, like a grumpy Mm. toad mood. And at the end of the day, he went up to his mom and apologized for being cranky and asked if she wanted to play a game with him. Oh my God. Just out of the blue at age 11. That has to, I mean, just twist the knife. Yeah, I know. I know. And his best friend, Aaron, who was there when the attack happened, said that Jacob was the first to befriend him in second grade when he was a new student. And he, you know, takes lessons from Jacob now as he raises his own children and kind of wants the, as he calls it, the goodness of Jacob 
to just be around him and his kids and his family. Um, yeah. And he said, hope doesn't stop, which is really lovely. I also, I can't imagine being a, a parent of a kid that that happened, or a parent after yes. being the friend of the kid that that happened to. And it's like, well, and now I got to trust that my kids are, are safe outside. And seeing them at age 11 and being like, that was my age yeah. when that happened. Ugh, yeah. It's got to be terrible. So, you know, Patty and Jerry worked hard to make sure their kids felt confident and safe again. They wanted them to, like, still be able to adventure and enjoy the world without living in fear. Um, in an interview, for example, Patty said, I'm a believer in children. I didn't want our kids to live fearful and afraid of the world. Mm. So that is the story of the kidnapping of Jacob Wetterling. It's a toughie. Yeah, I don't I don't know what to do with that. I it's a it's a. It's a toughie. Well, I don't, I, I, maybe I was mixing it up with a different story that I heard. It was the one where like the, it was a little kid and two older kids kind of like dragged him to a train station oh, or something. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. that's I what I thought Jacob I've, Bartling was. I've not been able to um, cover that one yet. I've yeah. not had the, that one I don't fortitude. know the name of. So then I don't off the top of my head either, but I know which one you mean. Um, Wow. Wow. Well, my, happy my Halloween. voice is Certainly like fried scary. after. Yeah, very scary. After Halloween last night and everything, I'm like, whew, well, also fried all the, from... the vaping you just did. That uh, yeah, to get, all the vaping to get through that, the dildo story. That one thing where I did half of half of it because you said principal, and I went, wait, I remember now, <laughs> the principal kid. <laughs> I didn't even get to enjoy it. I have to. I I sorry. I keep looking down. There's like there's some weird residue on this table, and like my. My sensory, I'm like just I can't oh, stop no. fucking with it. But I feel like Go if get I, a wet wipe. Yeah, if I touch it anymore, I feel like I'm gonna damage the table. Um man, okay. Well now when do we record and you get to bum me out all over again? Is that next week? Probably? Um I think so. I think well, I don't we're know. We're about to be in Texas together, you I and me. I know we're going to Texas. I'm very excited. We always have a great time in Texas. Um, we're gonna be in Austin and Dallas. The shows are sold out. Well, they'll be over, I guess, by the time this comes out. Um, but yeah, I'm excited, it'll be fun, and uh I'm excited to see you, Em. I know. I it's now this be like is the my... official one after the election, by the way. Sorry, just to say real quick, because we kept calling that last one the post election. This is the post election one, so we'll see. Well, so if um if things turn turn ugly for us that it'll justify me sounding grumpy when we first started this well, episode you can, so we, you can find both of us in dildo probably we're out of here <laughs> yeah, if yeah, things actually. go wrong i'm moving to dildo <laughs> I, if, hey you know the dumbest thing i ever did was buy a house right before an election because i'm like well maybe what if i wanted to be one of those people who just up and leaves i can't smooth move <laughs> whoops oh man well yeah i'll see you in texas uh, everyone else i guess we'll see you next week or at the yappy hour we're doing one final yappy hour today unless everyone's like we love yappy it, hours keep doing yeah, yeah but it doesn't seem like you do but we're gonna do one more so come join us for the yappy hour finale and then we're gonna start doing um hopefully start doing this is the plan anyway monthly live streams um for patrons so yeah go to patreon.com um and again if you sign up through the app store it will charge you a surcharge through apple so i would recommend um if you're on android that's you're fine but uh i would recommend going to the browser so and that's why we drink drink i think something's wrong with your car <laughs> there's egg in it <laughs> <laughs>